Are we? We are. Yay! Hello. Hello. Yeah, hopefully people can hear us. Can you hear us? Say it in the chat if you can hear us. They can. All right. Uh, great. So hi, guys. Uh, thank you for, for showing up. We are um, the Skunk Ape team, plus a special guest. And uh, we're here to play some Sam and Max and reveal some holiday contest winners and raise some money for the Video Game History Foundation and give away some stuff. Uh, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> um, but I'm Emily Morganti. I uh, do PR for Skunk Ape. I was also an early Telltale employee in the on the web team, if you ever... Um, I don't even know if I had a username back then, but if you ever uh, were on the forums and Telltale served like 2006 to 2009, I probably answered your question kind of passive aggressively with a smiley face at the end of it. Um, but we're doing a charity stream here today, and I've got with me the team from Skunk Ape. I'm going to give them each a chance to introduce themselves, and then we'll go into what we're doing with the donations and the rest of the stream. So take it away, Jake. Me. <laughs> uh, all right. Hi, I'm Jake. I worked at Telltale from 2006 up through 2012 or so. So I worked on all three seasons of Sam and Max with these guys. I did a lot of user interface design and community management with Emily. You probably also got passive aggressive garbage from me on the forums. <laughs> um, on season three, The Devil's Playhouse, I got to direct an episode. Uh, and then on the remasters, I've been helping out here and there, mostly fixing my old user interface crimes from a decade ago. Um, but now, Randy, Randy's this direction. It's your turn. Okay. Hey, I'm Randy Tudor. I worked at Telltale uh, forever uh, until it exploded. Um, yeah, I'm a programmer. I worked on a lot of games, Walking Dead, Sam and Max, all sorts of stuff. John? Oh, hi. Uh, I'm John Scro. Um, I worked on Freelance Police at uh, LucasArts and then was at Telltale for the entire duration with Randy. That was the last. And uh, yeah, now we're the Skunk Ape gang. Now we're the Skunk Ape gang. Dave. I'll, I'll be your, uh, I'm Dave. I'll be your special guest for today. Um, I also was at LucasArts for, for a while, uh, way back uh, about a million years ago, and then worked at uh, Telltale from about 2005 to 2014. Uh, I also worked on all of the uh, seasons of Sam and Max. I led the first one, and by the time uh, we started this one that we're going to look at now, I was a uh, director of uh, design for the studio. And that means if there are if the puzzles are unplayable or horrible or stupid, it's I probably should stop that, and you can blame me for it. So when we get stuck, we're going to look to Dave and say, "Yeah." Oh, when I we get stuck, we're going to just keep turning the hints up higher and higher and higher until you just <laughs> until have to Max start replying in chat. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, for those who don't know, uh, when Telltale shut down in 2018, um, their assets and everything they owned, all their game properties and everything kind of went up on the auction block and uh, Skunk Ape, the guys from Skunk Ape decided that Sam and Max games needed to continue to be uh, made and nurtured and kept running on modern computers. So uh, they, along with Dan Connors, who's not here today, um, acquired the rights to Sam and Max and have been making remastered versions of Telltale's episodic Sam and Max games. So uh, seasons one and two, which are um, Sam and Max Save the World and Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space, are available now on PC and every console. And we're working on the Devil's Playhouse right now, which is going to be out in 2024. So if you do exclamation point in the chat, uh, exclamation point skunk ape in the chat, um, there's a link there to the FAQ that's got a lot more information. And I just updated it today, so now it doesn't have outdated information from 2022 in it. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing you can do is exclamation point donate in the chat. That's how you can um, put some money into the Tiltify. We've got some stretch goals. Uh, we're at, I think, $4,092.50 right now. So we actually just surpassed the floaty pen giveaway stretch goal. So we'll be doing that later in the stream. And if we hit $5,000 during the stream, we're going to give away a copy of Sam Max Surf on the Highway Anniversary Edition, which is something that Jake and I worked on. Uh, back in the day with Mr. Steve Purcell. Um, and we've got a lot of other great rewards. You guys have probably seen them already, but you can click through to the Tiltify to see the rewards. We've got 
basically everything we could find in our closets that we wanted to get rid of uh, from the good old Telltale days. So uh, down, you know, from random pins starting at uh, seven fifty. $7.50 um, up to a lot of things that have sold out already. Um, we've got a Strong Bad Collector's DVD. We've got some Back to the Future prints. Uh, anyway, you can go to Tiltify and see them for yourself. And the other things we've got in kind of the, the higher brackets there is I cross-stitch, and I actually forgot to bring it into the room, but I'm working on a cross-stitch already of the Flaming Max head. Um, we've got a few other cross stitch incentives in there. So if you want something suitable for framing to hang on your wall, uh, check that out. And now I think we're going to look at some contest winners, unless I missed anything. Did no, I think anything? that's the right thing to do. Uh, right. For many, for the last couple of years, we've done a Sam and Max Halloween themed fan art contest, which is actually kind of the sequel to an old fan art contest we ran at in Telltale uh, on the old Telltale blog, like in 2008, 9, 10. Um, this year we kind of forgot about Halloween because we were working on the Devil's Playhouse remaster, so we turned it into a holiday season contest, and uh, people submitted a huge amount of amazing entries, and uh, we're gonna look at them right now and also reveal the winners. Is that right? I yeah. don't know what I'm talking about, even though yeah, we, yeah, I know exactly. What we're we're gonna about. reveal the winners. Um, I want to real quick answer a question that came up in chat. Someone asked, did anyone here work on the Bone games? Um, yes, actually, Jake and I came just after Bone came out, but uh, Randy, John, and Dave all did. And uh, Jake and I probably actually worked on Bone Gold or uh, <laughs> the, um, the, the Bone Special Edition. So I think we can all say that we worked on the Bone games. Um, I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat, but it's going by really fast. So if you ask a question and you're ignored, um, ask it again. As long Still as play those bone games anywhere? Question we want to answer. I don't know if you can play the bone games anymore. Are they around? I think they're still on Steam. Well, I still have them on Steam. That doesn't mean that you can buy them. Yeah, you, you still having them on Steam them. doesn't mean you can get them anymore. They might be on the Internet Archive. Emily. Um, I know. Don't, and don't that's actually that. why we're here. Why we're here. Um, I want to just say thank you to the uh, Video Game History Foundation for uh, trusting us with your Twitch channel that you haven't used in two years. Um, we really wanted to raise money for, for these guys because it's, you know, it's important. And we saw when Telltale, uh, shut down that, you know, it's very easy for kind of just old big pieces of video game history to disappear or end up in a dumpster. Uh, Randy has a story about, about dump things ending up in dumpsters. Um, yeah, so they, they do important work. And the week after Telltale shut down, um, Frank Cifaldi from the Video Game History Foundation actually met. Uh, Dan Connors at Telltale, and Dan took him through the office, and Frank took a bunch of things with him to put in the in the archives at the Video Game History Foundation. So that's how we were making sure that um, you know Telltale's history isn't going to disappear, and we hope by raising money for them today that we can continue to make sure that that is the case for Telltale. Is that what happened to the fucking statue? To which one? I'm only the kidding. Statue. He doesn't have that. <laughs> Nobody knows what happened to that. But you know what he does no, have he is is uh, the, yeah. the furry award that was awarded to Santa Max Ice Station Santa, which we're going to be playing today, and it's hanging up in a place of honor on the wall. So there's that. Anyway. Contest time? Contest. Let's do it. <laughs> also, note. Jake, if you see a donation alert come up, can you mention it? Because I, I can't see that. On my oh, yeah. Uh, I'm so. really bad at mentioning them, but I will do my best. Uh, right. Also, the next screens have white background, so all the donation alerts will disappear and make me feel really awkward. If I totally screw up on calling you out, um, sorry. I, I, I'll, I'll keep an eye on I'm bad at being on the internet. Five, but it's, it's, <laughs> okay. uh, it's not the same. It's not real time. So. And, and honestly, the donations are coming in so fast, I don't think we're going to be able to shout out everybody. But thank you so far to everyone who's donated so far. Um, this was amazing. We basically announced this like late Monday night, thinking we'd squeeze in a few donations and maybe start at like $100. And I think before I was even done tweeting about it, we'd raised like $200. And before the end of the night, we'd raised $2,500 and all of our rewards were gone. So... <laughs> Thank you guys. You you've uh, really turned out. It's been awesome. Emily, you mentioned the phrase "furry award" in passing, I think, and you activated the chat in a way that I'm not sure that you understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The Ursa Major Award uh, uh, for that's best the, anthropomorphic game character. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have called it that. I apologize. That was probably I, I should have. I should be. I should get a timeout for that. I'm sorry. I remember a couple years ago. Um, the Night in the Woods team won that award, and we were able to sort of like feel 
uh, you know, some camaraderie as as two teams who made games with anthropomorphic animal characters who won the uh, that award. Who won that award? <laughs> yeah, Emily, we had that above our desk forever. Do you still have it? I might have. No, it's one at the, the Frank. Two... Frank I think has that they it. gave us two, and I I might still have one. Um, it's not framed in my house though. Well, you should have you should have added that as an incentive. We could have. No, I'm never letting that go. Ten thousand dollars threshold. No, that's, that's staying right here. Um, all right. But right. so we can't see the PDF. Is it up on the screen right now? Oh, it's up on the screen. All right. So, and I, because I can't see what you're doing, you might need to narrate as you're going through the slides. Uh, or you can narrate as you go through the PDF, and then I can just press hotkeys and. Okay. Are we on? You. Are we on the first page? Yes. Okay. We're on, we're on Hey Kids. Let's see who won the Oops and Missed Halloween. So let's do a holiday contest instead contest. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yep. So like Jake mentioned, we forgot about Halloween. So this is the first uh, holiday contest. I don't know if we'll do it again uh, or if we'll remember to do it at Halloween next time. But let's advance to slide number two because uh, the big question for this contest was if you could give St uh, if you could give Steve Purcell a Christmas present, what would it be? And Steve is, of course, the creator of Sam and Max and we love him and uh, you guys will love him and we want to give him many awesome Christmas presents. Uh, so we got 113 entries, which I think might be a record for one of these contests. Um, Erin, our, our community manager, every year we're like, hey, let's do a contest. This will be great. And then she spends like 24-7 for a week organizing the entries and getting them out to us to vote on and everything. So he uh, presented us with all the entries as they came in. We voted. Um, we passed it along to Steve to uh, narrow down the winners. And um, we have, I think, 20 people all together. Um, if I can do math, I think 15 of those are runners up. So we're going to start with the runners up and each of the runners up is going to get a devil's, uh, playhouse steam key or a, a key of whatever platform you choose when the game launches in, uh, 2024. So we'll start with the runners up. I, I skipped ahead a slide. I apologize. Oh, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> okay. I am. So I'm doing too many things at once. Let's advance into, uh, the slideshow, the first okay. runner up. We have rubber stamps carved out of erasers by Sleepy Drifted. Yes. Um, I think these I are so cool. Great. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. yeah. I would say I I, uh, I have not seen any of these before. I'm coming in hot. So oh, good. Yeah, live Dave Grossman live. reaction. <laughs> <Yeah>. Holy cow. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Next slide. We have a crocheted Max hat by Lindsay K. Yes. These are so I good. Love. I know. They, they were so creative this year. It was a very difficult decision, um, which is why we ended up with 20, <laughs> yep. 20 winners. <laughs> um, we have the Devil's Playhouse characters made from clay. Uh, I, I love these. I think that's it's so be, good, um, including Sam having his angry eyes in noir mode, which is essentially <laughs> yeah, he, has, the he has the blunt shape uh, eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and, and Max just, like, I love it. I think yeah, multiple Max forms. On point. Season three is all about variant uh, character designs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is this costumes. a spoiler? Spoiler alert, sorry. <laughs> spoiler alert from a, for a decade old <laughs> video game. Uh, yeah, it's great. All right. um, the next one is an art card type of thing by Bag of Cobbles. Yeah, um, it's good. I Hired. like that it has the uh, the soda poppers and their fresh... Uh, the fresh snow, the oh, yellow snow, snow yellow reclamation snow. area. Yeah, it's yes. seen from high above. It's great. <laughs> it's um, like there's also a, a rat in there. Yep, and there's an elf that's either happy or maybe has to use the bathroom. It's running into the snow area. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's really good. Uh, All right. Next, we have a framed portrait of uh, Max Elisa. Um, <laughs> I just love this one. That little smile that's... just gets me. Smile is very good. <laughs> Oh, it's good. All right. Oh, I um incoming text from Jared. Oh, good. Okay. Why don't you talk about the Newton Ninja Turtles <laughs> thing and I'm gonna text him back really quick. Okay. Or the this uh, car. Yes, this is the DeSoto made from a customized Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles car, which is an awesome uh toy customization job. It's really good by Albert T. I didn't realize when we first saw that 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 was the TMNT car. John, you don't I, recognize I the Ninja Turtles car on site? It I should have. I have it upstairs in my in my closets. Yeah, once it was transformed into the DeSoto, it was unrecognizable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. 
Go Next, ahead, we Vince. have a yeah, diorama with 3D printed characters. This one is weird to me because I actually, when I saw the, the low res preview of it, I thought that it was just a scene a from the opening shot. credits, but I think it's someone ripped the 3D assets uh, from the opening credit sequence, 3D printed them, and then painted them in the silhouette colors, put them against a red background, and lit them with a red light. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a game screenshot, too, when I first saw it. They didn't and do this... 3D prints of every single frame of animation to stop motion this, though. So, like, you know, <laughs> uh, no, this, it's, it's, it's so cool to see this thing, like, in real life. Oh, it looks like Jared didn't listen to me and instead turned this. <laughs> Jared, Jared has entered the chat and messed up all of our webcams. <laughs> Go away now. Sorry. No, no, stay. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Actually, hold on a sec. Um, Turn your camera on, though. No, don't do that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's fine. Our cameras are just going to be completely uh, jank for a little while, but it's okay. Hi, Jared. We're Where's joined the by uh, Jared Emerson Johnson, who writes all the music in all the Sam and Max games. And, uh, and I'm, I'm actually too. So, oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you're here because I want we want your commentary on these uh, contest uh, yes. winners as we go through. If you look in the Skunky, um, the marketing channel, I put the PDF in there. You can see it there. Um, I just wanted to say one more thing about the diorama. Um, the, the characters do come from the opening credits, but I think originally these poses are from the Game Tap trailer. They are. They're from the original announcement trailer. Yeah. Um, and that's what I always think of when I see these. Um, same. But yeah. If you guys right. don't mind just talking about this art for a few seconds, I can fix everything well, that's bad in the world. Okay. Um, the, the interesting thing about that trailer, actually, for people who don't know, if, if you haven't seen the Game Tap trailer before, you can see it on Skunk Ape's YouTube channel. Um, this was a trailer that was basically, you know, Telltale. So I'll give a history lesson. Um, you know, Sam and Max Freelance Police was a game that uh, John and Randy and some other people were working on at LucasArts and it got canceled. And people who were making that game were like, but we really want to keep making adventure games. And LucasArts wasn't into that anymore. So they started Telltale. Um, and for the first year or so, they really wanted to make Sam and Max game, but LucasArts still had the rights. So they had to wait for those rights to expire. Um, but Steve Purcell is the rights holder. So once they expired with LucasArts, um, Telltale was able to license Sam and Max from LucasArts and they were going to make a Sam and Max game. So they had announced that they were going to do that, but it hadn't actually shown anything from it yet. So the, the GameTap trailer, which came out in uh, 2006 at E3, it was like a lot of pressure, I think, because it was the first time we were showing what this game was going to look like. And at the time, I think there were no environments uh like nothing really existed yet so i believe this entire trailer was like keyframe animated in maya and we had um max and sam were both voiced by um is it dave what's his name nolan dave nolan david nolan yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah. yeah. and so max sounds a little bit like a young sam and um <laughs> And Jared, I think you did a voice in the trailer also, didn't you? Jared's the narrator of that trailer. The narrator, yeah. <laughs> and at this moment in the trailer, they're turning around so that they can shoot you. And then Sam says, you shot me in you the shot ass, me in the ass bucket bucket head. Head. <laughs> Yeah, classic, classic <laughs> shit. Um, sorry, guys, I'm I'm slower at, at doing this than I thought. So it's OK. Should we advance the slide or not? You, yep. You're still in tap yes. is also that's um, how we first got connected to Frank Zafaldi from the game. Yeah. That's right. Frank worked well, the game tab. At that yeah, point. this is like six degrees of, of <laughs> adventure games. Yeah. So game tap was a, um, a streaming service. It was kind of like Netflix for games, like before any before Netflix was doing streaming, even it was it was um, Turner Broadcasting's kind of idea of how they were going to make old games. Um, keep them alive and they also wanted to fund new games and so they funded Sam and Max season one they also funded a multiplayer uh, mist game named Uru that was called was what it's called right yeah it eventually renamed itself to mist online but it was called Uru yeah. which is short for you are you <laughs> and um Frank who is now the director of the video game history foundation um had been I actually knew him he was um a journalist at Gam Sutra and he game tap um wooed him away to help them preserve games through their service. So um, he's been doing that for a very long time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and he used to, um, he used to kind of help us out with the marketing and stuff on the game tap side when we were coming out with these games. Also, while Jake is messing around with cameras, um, we're going to run a giveaway 
Um, let me figure out how to do this. Uh, the keyword. The keyword is give is exclamation point giveaway. <laughs> and uh, um, also, I set everything up again correctly. I, I, I okay. <laughs> that took a long time. Um, not sure if that's working yet, guys. So let me. Uh... Actually, it is. Yeah, things are things are happening. So um, what we're doing is we're doing a giveaway for uh, the Friendly Demon Song mini CDs, um, which I don't have handy, but they're little CDs that uh, Jared sings on. And uh, we're going to be giving away three of them because you guys crushed the stretch goals in the first night. So we'll run that. Uh, we'll roll that giveaway at the end of the contest entry reveal. All right, are we set? Can we can we advance from the? Oh yeah, we're, we we've advanced characters? to uh, the the ornaments. Yes. And the so crochet max, or maybe I'm these not... are just on one slide because they were tall and skinny. But we've got a. A uh, crochet max with the the hat on the ear. I thought it was a nice touch by Kumotu, and we have some Sama Max paper ornaments um, by Annie Sandy U one oh eight. You so, nailed okay. that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure why Sam is wearing that. Must be like his leisure clothes, or maybe they're his pajamas. I don't know. It's Sam's just, just like dadding it up in that. It's like velour pants, a uh, velour sweatsuit. I have that shirt. Yeah. <laughs> of course you do. Sam is cosplaying as Dave Grossman. They're also <laughs> opening presents. Is the Max uh, hat on the ear? Is that a Steve thing? Because several of our entries had a hat on Max's ear. It ears might be from the cartoon. Opinion. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, good work for both of these. Cosplay in a box set. Yeah, so this one's a little maybe hard to explain, but um, basically it was this box that to begin with has like Flaming Max head wrapping paper, which is awesome. And then when you open the box, it had um, guns and paper bag puppets and a badge, and it says the box was not to scale because this was this is like an adventure game box where you just put like a, a ladder in your inventory box. Sure, you open it and then whole <laughs> Santa Max costumes pop out. Yes. <laughs> Um, and the idea was, uh, this is everything that you need to dress up like Sam and Max and, uh, then go wreck havoc when you go to Comic-Con, I guess, where they're yep. shooting Cuphead and everything. And the, the monsters uh, from Sesame Thanks, Sesame Moy Sesame Moy, Street. for donating. Also, I saw one, Emily. I saw one. Thank you. Yep. Uh, hey, we're up Oops, to 42, oh no. 45. Oh, no? I, I went too happen? far. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, this one by Star Boys Trash, I think is looks like paper like paper cutouts but i i feel like it, it reminded me of one of those like 3d christmas cards yes it looks like the sort of card that like opens and then this stuff uh yeah sort of unfolds so it looks like their christmas feast includes corn dogs um a melting popsicle yep um there's like uh, some glazed turkey. macguffins some banang the nice. cake i think and that the cake is supposed to be the cake of the damned maybe yeah, it's maybe or it's the one you give like on his birthday maybe that uh <laughs> that just uh makes everything horrible yeah. um and and max again has the little hats on his ears and i just love uh steve's like look of confusion and alarm yeah that's the steve if he him. actually met sam and max in real life <laughs> yeah. also the glazed snowman Mc... uh ugly sweater is a nice touch yes the glazed mcguffins maybe they'll make an appearance in season three remaster john that might be true <laughs> Okay, uh, next. Next up, we have a sculpture yeah. by Cobalt Co Cobb. Cab. Um, we don't know what this is made out of, but it it reminds me of like what you would find in like ancient Peru or something. Like you're you're walking through Machu Picchu and there is like Sam and Max. Carbon. Sure, just extreme <laughs> weird weird QB <laughs> Sam and Max. Yeah, and and then also a Christmas card from um, Please Die Gently. Maybe you say that. Um, please die gently. Yeah, Max, is he trying to get at Sam's brain? I'm not sure what he's doing exactly. I think he's just climbing over him. It's and good. says, Thanks, Steve. Merry Christmas. Oh, and there's hearts. All right, cosplay with Santa. Yes, I hear my voice. Is somebody is, is it okay that I hear my voice? It probably means that someone's got their voices. audio too loud, but it's okay. 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 Uh, this one broke my brain because uh, <laughs> these people not only cosplayed as Sam and Max, uh, but they went and then visited Santa in, I think, the 
the like the New York Macy's, New or York something? Macy's, like Times Square. <laughs> it's, not, it's like they went to a very large department store uh, in front of many, many people, and um, Santa's face in this photo, I think, says it all in terms of yeah, like, what quite comment? knowing what's happening to him in this moment. <laughs> Is Santa being held hostage is what Chad is asking. And the answer is yes. I believe that's <laughs> that's what's happening. There. It's so good. Um, uh, yeah, I feel right, like more people one... should dress as bizarre uh, characters and then go and accost Santa. You don't have to. I don't endorse accosting Santa. I, I endorse c confusing him highly. <laughs> Um, all right, so those were the runners up. Each of those entries, the um, people who made them are going to receive a um, key for the Devil's Playhouse for the platform of their choice. Um, now, honorable mentions, we were not originally going to do. And when I sent the entries to Steve, um, he couldn't choose his favorites. So he he handpicked a few that he thought deserved to be honorable mentions. And uh, those are them. And so that's the surprise uh, prize. These people are going to get a Devil's Playhouse key as well as a box set of time and uh, beyond time and space from remote run games. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go and show those now. So first up, we have the Max Head cast for Melted Pennies, which um, the, the person um, who made this, uh, he, he wanted to point out to us that it is not technically illegal to melt pennies. It's just illegal to melt them and then make them into something and sell it. So, okay. uh, <laughs> so as long as there are, um, there are pennies for home use only, it's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but and and you know the, that's important because the rules for this contest have always been don't do anything don't illegal. Do anything illegal. Did they specify um, how many pennies were used? Like how much is this max technically worth if if you so. were to reassemble them out of penny or into pennies again, which would be illegal. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> like thirty cents. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, exactly. but I, I'm. I'm impressed by the craftsmanship. Yeah, it's good. Uh, also, I wouldn't have expected pennies to be this color when you melt them. So, what are they, zinc? What, I guess there's, yeah. It's what the inside of a penny looks like. I think the, yeah, outside, yeah, the outside is just the coating. Is that the. I'm not sure where he cast this from. Do you think he used the boss fight? The facial um, expression doesn't figure? look the same. It might be a, yeah. an original thing. It's, it's really cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Next up Next. is Sam and Max Nativity scene. <laughs> which is a true holiday classic yeah this um it's a miracle i like this i like it i'm gonna put that on my christmas card next year really really good <laughs> um, by radical we, gator we next have the thwapamax uh by casual rainbow um a lagomorphic voodoo doll and now forgive me when i ask this question i know that this is a monkey island reference but like how monkey island referency is this is there i think it's just this seems like it's just sort of a voodoo doll that anyone could have from anything i don't like i don't think okay dave you would know better than me but i don't think any of the like text call outs on this are specifically monkey island no, no, toy every kid is gonna want either. okay all right it's just the hot holiday no. toy as far as i know anyway yeah. I, I like that he has a has a pin in his eye. He would fit well in Santa's workshop next to like tickle me, torture me, Elmer. Torture and... me, Elmer. It's yeah. uh, legally distinct, Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> and Bot Buddy. Um, yes. Next up, we have the Santa Max Snow Globe. Um, I, I really like this one because not only is it a Sam and Max snow globe, but Sam and Max are both snowmen in the. Snow yeah, globe. it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And now for the grand prize winners. Are we ready? Yes. The anticipation is, is killing me. Um, <laughs> so the prizes for these guys uh, are going to be the, the Devil Flathouse Key, the mm -hmm. Max uh, Beyond Time and Space box set, and two um, action figure, I don't know what you call these, boxes from <laughs> Boss Fight from uh, Boss Studio. Fight, yeah. the, the wave two action figures, which are like Scuba Max and the Rubber Pants Commandos. Uh, don't forget Ratso, his octopus pal, and also Ratso's included. Pal. <laughs> for the, for the, the fans uh, watching at home, Jake, can you give us a little recap of who these guys are? They're from the comics? They're from the cartoon? They're from the comics. Man, I actually don't remember if Blip and the Rubber Pants Commandos are in the cartoon because it's been a long time since I watched the cartoon. But um, Ratso... And Commander Blip and the Rubber Pants Commandos are all basically characters who in various comics, when Sam and Max are in a really tight jam, it seems like Steve just invents characters who will crash through a wall and save them from whatever's going going wrong. So like they're being held by pirates who roll around on a pirate ship with big wheels that just is sort of based on land. And then 
when Sam and Max are about to maybe be made to walk the plank, I think Ratso shows up <laughs> and uh, they got all the pirates just sort of get tentacled off screen. Uh, and the rubber pants commandos, I think, show up when Max Salmon is uh, is threatening them in their office. Yeah, they're just they're just Deus Ex Machina machines that that. Uh, is it? Is, is it like uh, I'm? Oh, I'm running short on on panels. I've got to I've got to wrap this up. <laughs> sure. you know, how, how are Sam Max gonna get out of this one? I don't know. A chimpanzee Flint with a cigar and a bunch of babies come crashing through the ceiling and uh, throw a guy out the window. Great done. Uh, oh. It's it's. <laughs> It's so really good. You, you can get these at uh, Boss Fight Studios' website, and um, if you submitted one of the two winning entries that we're about to see, you can get them for free. Uh, and we, are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, yeah, sure. Do it. Stan Max Papercraft. Yeah. Uh, this was so uh, intricate. If you type exclamation point paper in the chat, uh, there's a link there to the YouTube that shows how these were made. Um, but of course, watch it later because we don't want you to click away from our awesome stream. Um, but I, I think they like took the game characters and went through a whole big process to make them um, out of paper. And uh, Steve's comment on this was he really liked these because you could tell that these are from the game. These are clearly Sam and Max from the Telltale and Skunk Ape games. This is obviously pre-remaster when they were lower polygon count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Obviously>. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and Max has no belly button. Crucial. And okay, is it gun ready? paper too? I think everything's paper. You'll have to watch the Looks YouTube like, to find oh. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very impressive. All right, are we ready for the last grand prize winner? Yeah, I was hoping that I could actually show it correctly, and I'm not able to do it yet. But um, okay. Well, maybe we can. Okay, we can this, talk a little bit. Yeah, talk about it. Uh, so this is a Cogs in Motion cover, and Jared, this is why I'm glad you're here, because you can yeah. tell us why is this so incredibly awesome? This is what so is awesome. it, and why is it awesome? Yes, this made my, totally made my made my week. Um, it, this is a cover of the, the Toy Factory music, from, uh, uh, Save the World, Episode 3, the mob and the meatball and the mole and whatever. Um, <laughs> got it nailed it got the it mob, the ball and the meatball there we go um it's sort of like a raymond scott-esque uh kind of mechanical tune um and they just made this amazing arrangement they recorded it all they're all playing multiple instruments and it's just like just knowing how much work and love clearly went into this it was just like really fun to see and they put their own flair on it and uh it's always fun to see uh musical submissions along with all the awesome art and sculpture that that comes in for this. So I was just over the moon when I saw this. It made me very happy. I can only think of maybe one other musical um submission we've had over the years. They're, they're, yeah, there's there's definitely old. been at least one. I, I can't remember now, but yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. And I and it really do I do appreciate the amount of time and effort that clearly went into putting it all together. Um it's a great cover. Yeah. It is. Uh I was hoping I would live in a world where I could play it live on the stream, but I don't know if my life will allow it. Give me one one sec. I can roll the, the giveaway while you're doing that. So last chance to type exclamation point giveaway into chat um, if you want to be one of the three people who wins a Friendly Demon Song mini CD, um, an item that uh, appears prominently in the game that we're about to play and that also features uh, Jared on vocals and probably every instrument. Pretty much, um, not all the instruments. But... All right. Oh, look at all those people typing giveaway. I'll give you guys a another minute to get those in. So far, we have eighty-two eligible users. So you have a three and eighty-two chance. And we're going to be doing more giveaways. Um, we've also got a signed vinyl, uh, Save the World soundtrack that was signed by Jared and Steve Purcell to give away. We have um, Sam and Max hit the road floaty pen to give away. It doesn't write, but I don't think that's the cool thing about the pen anyway. Um, and if we hit $5,000 during the stream, uh, we have a copy of uh, Sam and Max Start from the Highway to give away. All right. I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to hopefully not mess this up. And I'm going to get a pen out so I can write down the names of the people who win. And the pen has ink in it. All right. Not that floaty pen. It's not the floaty pen, no. Here we go. Rolling it. 
Otis Beer Streams is our first winner. I'm going to roll it again. Soot Nuki is our second winner. Do we have a cherry? Yay! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and Obscuro Vision, which sounds like a very Sam and Max thing, is our third winner. Nice. Toys of, toy of Power. Congratulations. Yes, yes you get Obscuro Vision, the Toy of Power. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisper the three of you right now from my personal um, Twitch account just so that I have those in there. And I'm going to ask you, please give me your shipping addresses and um, we'll deal with that after the stream. Okay. I think I can so, play the video if we want to do that while you're doing that, Emily. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. Nice. We'll see. It is working, but of course, all of you guys are watching that video. Can't do it. So good. Nice. Oh, I just, Jared, I just texted you, but I guess we're allowed to talk some, now. Yeah. Uh, do you do you want to hang out some more or are you going to go eat soup? Jared, your audio you're seems muted. to be gone. You're you might muted, not know Jared. he's muted. It's okay. I know now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll hang out for like five or ten more minutes and then I need to take some Tylenol and go to bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna play a video game. Thank you, everyone who who entered the contest. It was it was really fun. We'll do it again next year, either at Halloween or Christmas, or like St. Patrick's Day or Flag Day. Flag Day. Flag Day. <laughs> sure. <laughs>
Prime Day. Get that max. Get that max uh, calendar and move the sticky around. To decide where we're going to do it. Yeah, Arbor Day is always my favorite. Which one? Arbor Day. Oh yeah, Sam Max Arbor Day fan art competition. <laughs> 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 I'm yes. here for it. It has to involve a tree. You have to do Let's something do with it. a tree. Mm -hmm. um, we've also got another giveaway going now. This is for the signed uh, Sam and Max Save the World vinyl uh, signed by Jared and Steve Purcell. So we'll keep that running for a while while we start playing the game and then we'll we'll roll that in uh, maybe a little bit after 12 Pacific time. All right, let's play a game. Yeah. 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 And I'll I'll mention also that our donations are stagnant right now at 425250. Uh we have to hit 5000 during the stream to do that surf on the highway uh giveaway. Um probably our rewards are running low again, that's why it slowed down, but we still have what do we still have. Uh, we still have Back to the Future poster prints. Oh, I'll mention this because uh, nobody has, actually has bought them yet, and I think that's a travesty. Um, so when Frank went to the video game, when he went to Telltale after uh, it shut down, uh, Dan took him around to some merch closets and um, just handed him some things that were lying around there. And one of the things was a stack of Back to the Future posters. Um, and he was texting me about this yesterday and being like, what, well, you can add these as rewards. And he showed it to me. I was like, I have never seen that before. I don't know what this is. And I showed it to Jake and Jake's like, I've never seen this before. I don't know what this is. And it's basically, it's a movie poster that has Marty, old Doc and young Doc on it. Yeah. Um, and there was a movie poster that just had Marty that uh, from the game that Telltale sold on oh, the store for a long time. But uh, we can't, we can't, uh find this any evidence that this oh jared might have one here jared do you know where this came from it was a convention only giveaway or and gift to the dev team i think there were just a bunch yeah. around the office but we never sold it in the telltale store so yeah. so this is your only yeah i chance. think i have one somewhere this is your only chance to get one. one yeah cool I've guys have seen that. All right, I, don't I, don't have, I don't have one um, i directed an episode of that game i don't have one yeah. oh, <laughs> I, mean, I know i know where you could get one for 65 the game history <laughs> foundation has many spare uh posters if you want one just down the road down there. There. i can just look at it there um and we also still have the walking dead aj oh. bundle which is or are you going to add that into the pot john or are you just showing it just just showing no it. i'm just trying to see what i have around here um, we have a Walking Dead AJ bundle um, and a vinyl soundtrack donated by uh, Randy Tudor, Powerful Stash, one of the greats. Um, the AJ bundle has Kenny's hat as well as a little AJ statue and a pin. Uh, the soundtrack has, it's a four LP box set, so that might be like every Walking Dead game soundtrack in one box. I'm not sure. Um, and then we also still have some cross-stitch rewards for those who want uh, needle art for their walls, including a Thimbleweed Park mm -hmm. Afghan, which I know that's not Telltale or Sam and Max related, but it's kind of adjacent. Um, you could be one of only two people in the world who own one of these things if you want to pony up. Thanks, Foggle. $1,788. All right. Okay. Buy a video uh, game. Now it's time for the most cursed part of any Twitch stream, which is trying to add the game audio into the microphone mix and hope that it doesn't work. And then chat just says, like, it's too quiet and they don't specify which thing is too quiet. It's like, it's my favorite part of any stream. So, um, always a delight. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've muted the game in the game settings itself, which is, I've done this to myself. So now's the part where we should talk while the video game is playing. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to play is a little bit of the first episode of Sam and Max Season 2, uh, Ice Station Santa. It's the Christmas episode. Makes sense. Um, and there's going to be really incisive commentary from all of your favorite Sam and Max developers and uh, PR slash community people surrounding the video here. Um, and 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 I'll I'll say um, don't you know donations we're now up to forty four ten which is awesome. Let's sweeten the pot a little bit. If we can get up to five thousand by one o'clock, it's now eleven fifty five. So if we can get up there by one o'clock, what do you think we could maybe show a little sneak peek of another game? Yeah, 
Yes, sure. We could, <laughs> we could do that. We could, we could show a different video game from the future. Uh, if folks, you know, donate a bunch of money. <laughs> if we hit five thousand, if we hit five thousand dollars within the next hour, we'll uh, we'll give you guys a sneak peek of something that's not out yet. Yeah. Just saying. Just. No, it seems it seems good. I mean, this is uh, running inside the Telltale tools, so it could run any game at any time. Um, <laughs> any game. <laughs> you can load whatever you want. Um, okay. That you have access to, which is only the same in Max games. That's true. Um, not episode three. Get out of here, Jurgen. Uh, all right. So I guess I'll play and other people have to talk because the idea that I could talk and play games at the same time is absurd. Um, that is hard, isn't it? Also, if it's you've hard. asked any questions in chat in the last like 45 minutes, please ask them again because I was not watching, but I'll watch now. <laughs> Hard, right. It's hard to multitask. Uh, okay, I'm gonna hit the button. Is Jurgen actually European? Yeah, he's from Stuttgart. Yeah. Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Great. The new song made for the main town part is amazing, by the way. Good job, Jurgen. Congratulations on another successful peace summit, Mr. President. Don't congratulate me. Congratulate the peacemaker. You crack me up, little brain salad in a blender, Mr. Spatula. <laughs> He's been acting surly and withdrawn lately, even for a vice president. The lighting looks really good. But I, but I know the new lighting is amazing. Uh, I haven't seen this game in so long. <laughs> twisted him into a mockery of the goldfish we once kind of loved. It's always a but challenge to set up the story Lassie in 30 seconds. Stare, right. Like a sociopath or a, a Fox News <laughs> 30 it, seconds. Mr. Spatula is it correct that your pure original evil. plan for what was going to happen with Spatula, two, Spatula, like maybe you were setting up something here that ended up not coming to fruition in the rest of the of the season? No, I think that was always a... Um, my idol. Just, just a lead-in, like they, like uh, you know, you watch an episode of The Simpsons, and there's always some little funny bit at the beginning that doesn't go anywhere, and it just leads into the main story. That was the, that was the special idea. Dave, I feel like what Emily is alluding to is a thing that I remember hearing, which is that episode the two Max thing? Uh, had a potential Max Salmon thing made for it, but that didn't That's end up Mr. happening. But I think Mr. Spatula was always supposed to be evil, regardless of that. Max, what say we go down and administer a free oh, yeah. police style beatdown to that metal monstrosity? Yeah, I remember we made a Max, we made a Max Salmon model. Like we were, we got into production a little bit. No memory of that. It didn't anything though. Thanks to Cheese, Robin, and Corn Dog Patrol uh, for donating. <laughs> but this this room is now basically just a hey, remember season one? Here's all our souvenirs. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of stuff in the closet, if I remember. Yeah, this room is a living I love how full on. it is at this point. It's just awesome. Brady's Pro oh, must be at least 60% dust mites and skin flakes at this point. I got sad that Leonard is up there in the closet, yeah. <laughs> just tied up in the top. You're sad about Leonard? Reason, what was the reason for, the for work, putting him up there? Just because it was funny? Emily, Pretty funny. It's, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what, what piece of evidence did they keep from that case? And the answer is, it's not the meatball sandwich, it's just Leonard. In Good. the classic rope uh, rope, rope sack. In his rope yeah. Sack. Oh, yeah. Come, come <laughs> to play at, at some point in the season. Isn't it important that he's in there? I forget. Uh, he uh, eats the deed. You guys have been working on is it. Is that in that is the season? No, that's no. the previous season. I think you carbon date him. You need to find his birthday. I remember Maybe. he dies. Maybe so. By the way, the stream will contain spoilers yeah. for Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space. <laughs> what goes up must come down. But you do see him again when he's not tied up. During the, when he goes true. to travel of the past. In this episode. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Just to tell Maybe we'll get there. Again, who's back? <laughs> Good arm on that one. There are probably going to be places where this game lags because I'm he playing it inside the game engine. He may be a mechanized engine of wanton destruction, but his taste in hideous like mitten destruction, but his taste in hideous <laughs> middle of the road hot music is impeccable. I think the robot 
speaking in song lyrics is a, is a Chuck Jordan edition. I think that's a, definitely a Chuck, a Chuckism. Yeah. Very, um, it's very, very kind of it tips off the age of the people who wrote this, but the song lyrics are all from the 80s. Yeah. I'm trying to remember who voiced Nametron. I can check. Maybe games? I know, I'm looking. Are you looking up? Okay, I know. Trying. I don't know why I can't think of it off hand. Excuse me, Mr. Ginormous Wind Up Toy of Destruction, sir. Did we get into any trouble yeah. because of the song reference? Not that I know of. Tearing apart our building. Um, mm. In truth, it does not matter. And that I exist might just be because we didn't ask anyone for destruction. Um, if it was okay, but I, I'll tell I a story that I actually I always meant to tell oh, no, during Sam. the 205 He's commentary the and then I forgot, college. and it's haunted it's me ever trouble, since. All right. Um, so just as background, the first year we did our Halloween contest, uh, we did not put any caveats on it, and one of the winning entries was were some people who put. They carved a Max uh, pumpkin, and then they put fireworks inside of it, and exploded them out of his head. Which was which was so good, but also then um, Telltale's lawyer found out about it and was like, "Okay, you cannot have a contest like this. That's not okay." So that's where it can't be a legal canon. Um, so as season two was in production, we were about to announce the, the titles of um, the episodes, and episode five was supposed to be called "Sympathy for the Devil." Um, huh? Which is a uh, Grateful Dead song, destroy. right? Rolling Stones. Song. Rolling Stones song. Sorry. I'm sharing my age. So um, and uh, before it was meant, before it was announced, I was concerned about this, and I said, "Has anyone cleared no. this by legal, just to make sure that this is okay?" And so we asked the same lawyer who told us you can't have people exploding pumpkins, and he was like, "Yeah, you, you." Well, he said, "It's okay. You can do that as long as you then don't also have the line from the song in the game." And uh, we did have you a very like a smart long line from the or song. Again, I think, so. Can you explain something to he us? He told us we could not there call it that, no and he's changed you could to have have that I could not yeah, answer it immediately. So. Shoot. so no, we that did not get in trouble, you. but also I made uh, the title of the episode change at the last minute, and people were mad at me. I remember that because oh, I made yeah. title cards for like four <laughs> different titles for episode uh, 205. <laughs> there, was a, there was a new list that was hastily gone through. When we added the achievements for... Episode five. It's called "Sympathy for the Devil." As an homage. Yes. Yeah. Why do fools fall in love? <laughs> LOL. Well, making extra work, so work for Jake. I think that's been like my entire career. Making extra work for Jake, including like, hey, can you put on a charity stream at the last minute with seven people in chat? All right. No, uh, I, I've I, asked I, him I, the existential question. All right. I uh. My memory is that after season one, one of the one of the things we learned was that Bosco's and Sybil's were too far from each other. There was a lot of walking on the street. And we wanted to redesign it. And at the beginning of that scene there, the robot is, is just holding Sybil's. He's torn it up out of the ground. And he throws it down the street well, over next to Bosco's. And that's where it is for the rest of Rest of I had one hell of a The robot that. did that so that it would be Bosco's Sybil Stinky's just in a row for the season two street layout. With a reanimated yeah. yep. Cleveland. Was there any pushback from Art to do that, or were people basically like, it's a new season? Oh, yeah. 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 He always got pushed back anytime we wanted to change anything. Sure. I mean, you know, Dave Bogan just doing his job trying to um, make sure that uh, we can actually afford to make all the art that we're trying to get him to make. Valiant Sorry, Cheese asked, who's being pinched there? I think it might be a character from Great Carries. You guys can handle yourselves. That yeah, those are model Cooper. variations. Inspiring, even in his unhelpfulness. It was really funny in the remaster to get to change the tiny hole in the wall into a giant hole in the wall. Um, I feel like John and Em and I did that because we were just feeling spicy, but it also means that you can shoot the opposite in a way that makes it look different than season one that was the thing that we really wanted to do in the remaster was have the lighting in this space different than it is in season one and then also have the composition different so we thought it would be cool if we have the robot laser beam blow a huge hole in the wall and then also we can actually just run the camera through it but it also meant that we got to build out flint paper's office a little bit because he shows up a right. bunch in the later uh, part of the season, but he only has like these six lines of dialogue in this episode. So, you know, Flint, this robot's not gonna defeat uh, itself. I didn't beat this we tried to make it look like the, the few times you get so a glimpse of it in the comic, dope, including the like uh, knocked out or dead guy own, in the corner, and uh, 
his collection of yeah, knives and yeah, knives and guns stuck got in got the wall. Second to consult yeah. on our strangest case yet. I just I wanted to say going back to the the street being changed the other reason the other thing that changed in season two I think because of this back and forth on the street being so long was adding Sam's ability to run. Um, In season one he could not run if I recall correctly Randy would would know for sure. I think maybe he couldn't run until we did the Xbox version. Running? Yeah. In in the original Telltale game. Don't bother him, Sam. He's way too busy to deal with something as simple as a giant robot. Um, Jixi Ezra in the chat said, um, Jared has to be the most talented musician I've ever heard. I've never listened to one person making so many different music genres. That's poor talent. Purple heart. Oh, thank you so much. (laughs) I love the variety. What? You were trying to destroy us. And worse, you butchered Um, every song I wish I forgot. First time chat says, hello guys, sorry, I just wanted to say I love all your work, amazing work on Sam and Max, hopefully Tales of Monkey Island next. That'd be cool. I hope he didn't fall on anybody important. Better hurry down if we want to loot the body for spare parts. We uh, have to finish the Devil's Playhouse before things get off whatever (laughs) our future holds. Devil's Playhouse is taking a little bit of time to make, it turns out. Yeah, get on that. You shouldn't be streaming, Uh, you should be working on a video game. (laughs) Thanks so much, Heisengorge. George. George. Heisen George. There it is. I can pronounce names. Anonymous. Thank you. Oh um, my god, we're only $85 away from five thousand dollars. Oh so crazy. That's awesome. How did, how did that happen? The people know. Uh that happened because cheese. Uh we've gotten some, some big donations. Uh everyone is being extremely generous. Uh Oh, let's let's turn off the lights because it's the uh, remastered version with the lights. Yeah. <laughs> mm, add a little ambiance. Oh yeah. Before we go downstairs and. Mametron was Mametron was voiced by um, Doug Boyd, who oh, also nice. did Sex and Nel- in order, Nathan, Nelson in order Heather's. Look, holy knuckle and oh, yeah. on a bunch of bunch of other. This cutscene right here was done by Marley Brezzo, and I think was the first time that we had a quote-unquote like full cutscene that was made entirely in the choreography tool, which is to say it it wasn't 100% animated by hand. Usually in season one, we had, I think, three moments per episode that were the big cutscenes, quote-unquote, and those were always keyframe animated, and this was done entirely in uh, what's called the chore tool, short for choreography. So, cool Sam and Max fact. Eventually became the go-to method for basically every future game. Yes. Eventually, oh. sort of, animation was saved for big action moments, but so much of the character performance ended up being done in the... Oh, I need to shoot, guys. You need to shoot. Uh, oh, man. This was... Uh, Jake <laughs> made this credit scene. This was one of your early chore tool... That's true. Yeah. I, made the, I made the opening credits for season one and two as sort of two of the first things that I did uh, at Telltale. And, uh, and then I got to remaster it for this version with this extra leap. And then yeah. we used the whole shooting animation and you can shoot along with them now, uh, which is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and that those were those poses that we saw in the diorama. Also, if you're on an OLED monitor, I apologize for how much I just made your room flash extremely bright colors by shooting. Corndog Patrol says you can shoot those, all caps. Yep. Yes, you can. Yep. Easter egg. I just assumed everybody knew that. Maybe only we knew that. <laughs> Oh, our extra little moody approach Santa's workshop sequence that we snuck in. Yeah, it's really good. It makes it all feel a lot bigger. I remember all the concept art and discussions for this well, environment we were North Pole. moody and freaky, and then it was Santa, outsourced the under duress and, and came back in a way that I remember Bogan was always like, no, okay. <laughs> you can't be Santa's judge, but jury, and executioner. Now. Don't I get yeah. to do anything? Why were... Um, was that a new thing in season two that we were outsourcing some of the art? Doing here? Some of the environments? Uh, no, it, it happened in season know. one as well, but I think yeah. um, Ice Station Santa and Moai Better Blues were in development concurrently, so our in-house environment team was split across two episodes. So there's mm. a few pieces of the of those two episodes that were uh, made differently than we usually do it. Love all the snow. Dave, you want to talk about the uh, why this episode is what it is? How did we get here? <laughs> what did you do? What did you What have you done? It's, it, you know, this this is just um, 
That's sort of the humor of Brendan Ferguson coming to the fore. I, I, things usually started from some joke, which in this case was um, just the concept of Santa Claus as this sort of gun-toting survivalist maniac holed up at the, at the North Pole. We thought that would be really funny. And look at his. That's it. It's good. And the, the soda poppers, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Soda poppers, oh, they just they look, come Max. back it's so often. Poppers. Again. We thought you'd all gotten they, taken out. They, just, they started as a, um, a budget-cutting right, really. method for the what are you doing first here? season. Because uh, we had a very small character so budget, and we um, we needed to have villains in various and places, and we thought, well, okay, if we make them triplets, you know, can we, can we cut down the character today, budget that way? No and Morgan sort of reluctantly agreed to that. And then... They, they got voiced and they were all extremely annoying. There was a lot of sort of reaction about people hating them, but they were just they were so I classic and so much. convenient for a lot of situations that we just kept bringing them back. We made them the governors of states, and now here they are all wrapped up in this I feel thing. Like pretty quickly into season one, you all realized they were extremely annoying and then started to write them as even more annoying. And over their, over their occurrences in the game, they just become more and more insufferable. I was going to say less and less 100%. sufferable, but I don't think that that's correct English. <laughs> yes. What did you get from Santa? A jar full of rhinoceros musk. Yes, another one. I got a see-through nighty. It's beautiful, but I don't have the hips for it. I'll trade you. Why? What did you get? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I gave Sam last year. And that's why we no longer have secret Santa at the office. Uh, I'm not going to ask if they're still governors. I, I'm we not be concerned going. with lore and continuity. Itself. <laughs> yeah, not like that snobby, self-sufficient St. Patrick's Day. There is an awful lot of that in all of the Sam and Max games. I lore? Think. <laughs> lore and continuity, yeah. I, just, uh, you know, I mean, especially, you, you know, you're catching up with um, characters again. Um, it's, it's, you always want to know, know something new about them. Part of the whole um, idea of the of the episodic gaming was okay. You're going to come back again and again. We're going to shoot like sitcoms. You're going to see the same environments, the same people, and there'll just be new stories. And what we learned over time was um, people don't like to see sort of the same the same th details in the environments, and they don't really like revisiting the same That's places. They're sort of neutral about that, but they really loved seeing the you characters come back again. There was always something out. new about them. No, Max is harmless. And so there's that's why there's always sort of deep dialogues about, hey, what's going on with you now? I haven't seen you for five minutes. And, oh, I became the governor of this. And there's some details. No, it's great. And I, mean, I think also when these were coming out once a month, people weren't just like, you know, you, you literally don't see these characters for five weeks. The cartoons always made him seem a lot more jolly. Um, I, I've put a couple of polls up in the Tiltify. If, if anyone wants to just toss in a few dollars for fun, you can vote towards... Oh, by the um, way, uh, we're over $5,000. Um, hey, hey, Penny uh, just do, put us over hey, the edge. Do we, um, that's awesome. Do we need to come up with another stretch goal now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, if anyone feels like just throwing in a few dollars to vote on a poll, um, the, the poll options are which is the best Sam Max season, who is the best Max voice actor, and who's the best Papa. You know him? So these oh, are important sure. questions He's that the we one need who to have answered. In charge here. Was that before or after he went crazy? I'm not sure. When someone offers me a promotion, I don't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Anyone got a okay. What happened to Santa? Oh, Mime Sweeper. You ask me, see Mime Sweeper in the background. Oh, yeah. Before he snapped. You can't actually play that in this in this game, though, right? That's, that's not yeah. until the um, strong bed. Does strong bed have a playable Mime Sweeper? Right off. Or did I believe it does, yeah. It does, yeah. No, I mean, it's a playable Mime Sweeper. Um, yeah, I think Chuck came up with that for this game, but then... When we were making the Strong Bad like series, the part of the shtick was we would always have some little mini game in them, mm -hmm. and we're pushing him to put in Lime Sweeper. And then uh, one day he just went home and, and he came back the next day and he had a prototype of it. And it was just working and it was funny and a little a picture of Marcel Marceau in it with a little broom. I wonder what the elves have on their office computer. <laughs> super cute. So I, I think that wound up in the, for mime in the final game. Let's see, Prancer, Wiggles, Shambling Corporate Presence. How'd that get there? 
Well, pretty soon it's gonna be <laughs> all Max. Now, how do I start a new game? Sorry, I um, think does it's Skunk Ape have the license for Hit the Road? Computers and no. Icy Arctic Wastelands. Santa Max Hit the Road is still owned by Lucasfilm Games, uh, which is part of Disney. Disney. So, nope. Um, Max Hit the Road Max, I guess, is technically a Disney princess by some sort of transitive property, but um, <laughs> it's no, we, we've got nothing to do with that one. <clears throat> Hey, it's the oh, North my favorite Pole, joke. the magnetic center of the Earth. <laughs> magnetism? <laughs> don't tell me you're one of those kooks. You don't believe in magnetism? It's an interesting theory, but I'm not convinced. Your magnetism is a, a cute lot funnier. time story, but I believe in one thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just seeing okay, that animation fine. of the guy doing it, uh, a really <laughs> custom like limit. visual gag was so exciting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which oh, Jared, you don't like Max again. being a weird magnetism truther <laughs> in 2023? It's a little too much. It's never in 2023. <laughs> yeah. Magic. Uh, I do have one thing to do with Sam and Max Hit the Road, which is that I'm the person doing the graphic design on the limited run uh, physical edition, and I'm the reason why that thing is now basically a year late. I am horrible. So if you're the person, if you ordered that and you're wondering what is limited run doing taking so long, it's me actually. Yeah. I'm the person who did it. Don't blame them. Um, Gee, so, thanks, Jake. Jeez. Anyway, that's my my uh, live stream. It's your confession. You yeah. know. <clears throat> Bob, hit the bot, buddy. This one's pulling around. Oh, yeah. to send presents. Oh, uh, I want to look at Sam's reflection in the computer screen. To send <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Really I redid good. this computer screen for the remaster because. Oh, I never noticed the reflection. That's awesome. You went overboard. Yeah, I and then that. I went insane. Um, yeah. Grandma's first happy pill. Grandma's, Grandma's happy pills. <laughs> What's Are we getting a collector's box says, of the Devil's Good boys Playhouse? And girls don't ask Might Grandma be? a lot of questions about her pills. Now we just need if to. We ever finish it. It'll depend on if Jake ever finishes Hit the Road. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there plans for another season that is not for VR hardware? Um, well, the VR game was not made by this team. The VR game was made by um, Happy Giant in collaboration with Steve Purcell. Um, I think as of right now, Skunk Ape is just focused on finishing the Devil Playhouse. Yeah. So whether or not there will be another season is not a question. It's not a lie to right say now. we genuinely don't know what our plans are for after the Devil's Playhouse. We're still figuring out what to do with our lives. I mean, what these guys do with their lives. I have a job. <laughs> I'm just here for the stream on Christmas break. Um, <laughs> unlike some people here, I have a job. Um, I'm going to click the bot buddy, John. Do it. Thank you. John, can you, can you tell everybody system. the history of the bot buddy? Oh, the history of the bot buddy. The complete well, history? During that, our first Telltale office, which was on, on Anderson, um, my mom would always send me whatever gifts just for the hell of it. One time she sent me a bot buddy. It was this red thing that punch and take out your frustrations on it so i set it up in the office the telltale Merry office Christmas. right in the middle if of the room so. everybody would go by and it's a take out their frustrations with each other on the bot buddy instead control fisticuffs it's a good time so somebody popped it i think maybe troy karate kicked it or something and popped nope. it i didn't learn anything. then i got another one I worry so and <laughs> yeah, i don't know what happened with the second one does he did he survive into the Last it's office? The world's simplest man. I don't remember him after Bella. Was he even a Bella? Did he survive to Bella? He was a Bella. Yeah. For lateral thinking yeah. He used yeah. to be in that space kind of between the conference room and your office. Okay. Yeah, I don't I can't picture him at Glacier for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we always we had Bot Buddy modeled and but you couldn't interact with them, which is frustrating. So the remaster uh we made it so you could actually punch them. Number one feature. Things to do <laughs> yeah, you can it do is. hundred percent more really. punching with Bob, buddy. Yeah. We've got better things to do than jump around on a trampoline. Okay, I have to be honest with you guys. I don't actually remember what to do next in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get into the back room. You? Did you get the tears yet or not? Oh, I have to have to make this guy cry. Oh, no, I yeah. yeah. need a water yeah. can for that. Is did you get it? It's under the tree. Did you already get it? No. Isn't it under the tree? We don't know anything is it outside. Is it is it even is it is the watering can even in this environment? Somebody in chat tell us where to find a watering can. People are just screaming make him cry in chat. We're so. trying to talk <laughs> to you know him. Mind if I keep Oh no, he just he just pulls it out of nowhere. Okay. Just remember to Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have to ask you have him to about. Make him cry to get the damn watering can. You have to ask yeah, him about yeah. watering things. 
Yeah, I always felt it was weird. He just whips it out of the water again and cries again. Did you guys work on this game? It's been a while. Randy, do you remember how to beat all the Sam Max games? Is that just like the deepest groove ever carved into anyone's brain that has ever happened? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. What a shame. I mean, I still have some trouble with season three sometimes because it's, you know, flipping insane. Yeah. We can make you cry. I bet we could make you cry. Thanks. I've been trying to cry, but I'm just too darn happy. We can fix that. In fact, that's about the only thing. That I think is Melissa Hutchison. You want to make me cry? Went on to I think so. Melissa Hutchison. We want to. I think so. <laughs> Unless I'm crazy. Oh no, it's Amy Rubinate. Okay, that's right. Okay. Who, who else does she play? Anybody? She was in a vampire story. I don't know. I don't know if she was in much else of Telltale's kind of thing. Um, Look how nice that animation is. It would be really cool if it looked like that when you switch to Max in. Uh, the Devil's Playhouse Remastered. Hmm. It doesn't look like that right now. <laughs> uh. Note to self. Randy's like, nope. is, it, is that going on a list now? Yes. Oh, I'll right now. Oh, no! Wait, how am I supposed to cry if I don't have it's any It's been eyes? on the list for a while. The problem is that Jake has a job. Thanks, but <laughs> I'd rather keep my eyes. <laughs> We killed your dog. Oh, no! Yep, he or she <laughs> ran right in front of our car, and, well... I tried to draw you a picture, but I ran out of red crayon. That sounds awful, but I don't have a dog. I know. We got him for Thanks, you. Thanks, And then we killed him. Thanks, UFO you party. Like Ryan yet? Was he a good dog? Oh, oh yeah. Talk to somebody well, else then before then you at have least dog he's in doggy happens. heaven now. Why don't we know how to play this game? Um, I, don't think that's the, I don't think that's the answer. What's up? Yeah. That's it, yeah. You don't still cool. believe in Santa Claus, do you? It's right there in the sure background. I do. I saw him this morning. Well, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but uh, Santa isn't real. He's just make-believe. Like the Black Easter Bunny. Or elves. But I'm an elf. That's what makes this so hard. Wait a second. Are you saying I don't exist? Can you prove that you exist? Well, sure. Was it intentional uh, that there's I mean, all this kind of like, existential no, crisis going on in this episode? I Ouch. Because everybody right. gets depressed at Christmas, so <laughs> ponders the meaning of life. <laughs> Probably just the writers, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their own... You exist. Uh, who gets looping out that watering can as well? How's it at the ready? <laughs> All right. Good chore. I think I need to sign off, everybody, but have a great stream. And uh, thank you, Jared. Thanks again, everybody. Hope have you a feel great day. Jared, I have, I have a request for you, which is a, sure. a simple request, but I'm sorry. Would you mind? Uh, would you mind leaving your video running even if you <laughs> mute it and throw the camera off, so I don't have oh, to relay fine. out the entire scene yeah, yeah, yeah. when you leave? Totally cool. No worries. Well, is turning the camera off still going to mess it up? Though? We'll find out. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right. I I'm, think... I, I'm turning off the camera now. Good luck. Hi, Jared. We're all counting on you. We should oh, also... rearrange everyone, but it's okay. Uh... I'm going to roll the giveaway while you're messing with that. Okay. Actually, ha, I'm not because I broke the giveaway. Everyone type giveaway into the chat. Exclamation well, point kind of giveaway into the chat. We names now. Yeah, everyone. I... The names are all scrambled. It'll take me one second. We're going to be rolling for a uh, Sam Max uh, Save the World vinyl, and I have to remember that I can't multitask in Nightbot because if you click away from the giveaway, it resets itself. I think you should just randomize the name every few <laughs> seconds. I should. Um, I shouldn't. Like the remaster credits, you know. Okay. Keep typing it in. Do it again if you already did it because I failed at Nightbot. Next time, I think everyone just needs to have a piece of paper that we can. Yeah, just tape them to your camera. Our name. That would be more correct. Yeah. Let's see. Also, next time I could just do the one where you don't have to type anything, and it's just everybody who's in the chat. Second happiest place on earth. I'm gonna fix it because I have to. I feel compelled to to fix all the things. So this is the giveaway for the vinyl. After this one, we're going to do the floaty pen, which doesn't write, but still floats. And then this gets on the highway. It doesn't write. <laughs> sad. Such a sadness. At least it still floats. It still That's floats. Yes. yes. The, the floaty like pen um, was donated by Steve. Nice. 
Did I do it? I did it. Um, There's two of me now. And I'm just looking at the polls. I'd like to say um, the Devil's Playhouse has been voted the best season so far by one person. Nobody else has voted in that one. Um, <laughs> who is the best Max? Was it Jake? Ooh. It was not me. <laughs> I do actually have my Hit the Road floaty pin still. <gasps> wow. With the, does it write? With I don't know if it writes, but it does have it does have out of focus floating action, or it should. Does it float? Maybe it doesn't float. <laughs> well, everything's sad. Um, who is the best Max is currently a tie between Robert yeah, Tinkler and William Caston. We'll never uh, see it. Sad. Followed by Nick Jameson. And who's the best popper? Nobody has voted for. <laughs> what? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Popper. No, somebody did. We do have no. one vote, and it's for Dick Peacock. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that that's his name. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to roll this giveaway now. And this is for the vinyl. I've got my pen at the ready. And Paletical is the winner of the vinyl. Congratulations. Wow. Congrats. I can't believe he filled up the entire can. Yeah, we must have um, so really terrified I'm the poor guy. I'm going to send guy. you a whisper. Good work, little buddy. Oh, stop. <laughs> now you're going to make me cry. Um. Here we grow. Hey, Sam, give me the rest of those elf tears. I've got a date with an unsuspecting metropolis. Sorry, little buddy. They only oh, work on shadows. You win again, Tokyo! <laughs> All right, it's extremely goofy animation time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so silly. Was I'm going to leave the giveaway for the Someone for the decided pen. it should be an escalator. Oh, oh, oh my God, I'm on fire! Nick made that, didn't he? I think Nick made the escalator. Um, I'm going to leave the giveaway open Merry because I feel bad Christmas. that I messed it up before. So keep typing that in. That'll be for the floaty pistols. pen coming up in about 15 minutes. Chugga plum fairies! Santa, you okay in there? Ho, 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 ho! Eat hot lead, you little imps! <laughs> About a week before Christmas in 2007, um, oh, someone the on the web team, the I don't know which of us came up with this idea, but someone thought, right wouldn't now. it be funny if we pieced together cutscenes from this game into a holiday special machinima that, of the type that you could there watch on TV? Instructions. And I want to we do it now. mentioned that to management, and they're like, that's a great idea. You have five keys. Get it done. Do and um, How do we start? Nick Herman, hey, who was our marketing intern at the time, um, no more did a lot of work to make rituals. a holiday special, which I think is up on the Skunky YouTube, right? First, so if, if you want to sit around the fire with your family on Christmas Eve and watch an abbreviated version of a PlayStation no. Santa on YouTube. Ask your parents Emily, am I correct you that you tried to show your family the Santa Max Christmas pole. special? They were like, what the hell are you making us watch? Like, what is this? Draw the hell spawn out by seeing the friendly demon I think Daniel Herrera also played it for his family, and they were like, what is this? Is this what you do for work? I don't understand. This is going to be the best Christmas ever! I think, though, that's not as good as the time that I had them in for a playtest of um, Bright Side of the Moon. And they didn't get it, and they were confused by it. But, the, like, my mom remembers, like, with horror that she had to eat... Um, she had to eat pineapple pizza because by the time she got into the conference room pineapple was the only flavor that was left <laughs> and and it still haunts her to like 20 years later so that's really funny uh also you two again hold oh, still true while leader. i give you your present is that um terry mcgovern yes Frank santa it's definitely terry mcgovern it's not... yeah <gasps> well known as the uh these aren't the droids we're looking for. Yes. I... Also, <laughs> uh, Larry from The Walking Dead, and he's in the original DuckTales cast as well, I think. Yeah.
I love how the, the whole first half of the puzzles in this section of the game are just reverse engineered from the idea that, well, it's it's Santa, so you should have to go down the chimney. <laughs> like that was the stake in the ground that no one was willing to move. It was like, it, it has to result in you going down the chimney. And it means that you're just making making right. <laughs> somehow a tree has to look like this by the end of the puzzle design so that uh, so yeah. you can get down the chimney. Um, now that I have this, my exorcism instructions, I think that I should go home and start uh, ruining people's lives. Is that correct? Yep. I think so, yeah. That's right. Things are about to get real. And the way that we... can't uh, leave until you have those. This must be Santa's The way that we... Uh, I do not remember what happened. Reindeer. I'm going to the no, sleigh. I think they don't know how to use the video well, game. Tuck break for the reindeer. The day we, we, we dealt with this in the cartoon was that we just had a, a montage of them running around getting uh, horsemen, so we cut out like the entire big part of the game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we just play like Jared's uh, <laughs> electric to, violin Sam? solo from the street music from the street as Sam and Max just collect a bunch of stuff. Let's head back to civilization, or what's left of it. Good thinking. We can always freeze to death out here later. Man, Brett did such a good job lighting this stuff. It looks great. All right, there's new street music in the remaster of season two. Um, What's the reason for that? Just to make it was it just seem a, you hear the same track one? in the same environment for eleven episodes in a row, uh, and then season three had a different cover of this. So we talked to Jared about it and thought it would be fun to have like. Oh, the other reason is, uh, by the end of the season, a lot of the music in Sam and Max Season 2 was really, uh, like, genre-heavy, because all the episodes are such, like, you know, this sort of North Pole horror movie, or the, um, you know, the sci-fi stuff in Episode 4, or the monster movie in Episode 3, that this was an opportunity to let Jared... Like, when you when you hear the Season 2 soundtrack, there's not a lot of just sort of Sam and Maxie jazz in it, because so much of it was written for the first season, and this was, like give Jared an opportunity to write another just sort of core Sam and Max hanging around uh, the street their neighborhood song and it's like it's a great track um, what am I even doing should I go meet Stinky and Grandpa Stinky sure yeah. if anyone's thinking about uh, donating and voting on this polls we just still do have some uh, printer loafers ah, available this is a very eggs. rare piece of telltale history I can show one here on screen awry. it's like Stinky's <laughs> diner never closed welcome to Stinky's we never close except when we're closed who are you? I'm Stinky the Stinky we know was a cantankerous old man who transformed his seething hatred the of humanity loafer? into a misanthropic totally smorgasbord of culinary horrors culinary horrors. I'm that sorry. does sound like Grandpa. Okay, we're ready for the next round of trivia. And the question is, when did the War of 1812 begin? A, 1812, B, 20,000 years BC, C, March 3rd, 2004, D, Bangers and Mash. Dave, do you want to talk about Stinky? You don't you can say no. I phrased I phrased it as a question. I don't remember much about Stinky, honestly. It's been a long time. You guys have all been working on this. So for me, it's been 16 years. Well, for people who don't know, Stinky is played by Melissa Hutchinson, who's also Clementine in The Walking Dead. And we're not playing 203 right now, but if you, some people may have not noticed that if you play the driving game in 203, Clementine's house is there and you can deliver CDs to you her can house. You a Stuttgart online <laughs> CD. <laughs> yes. And Melissa did some new voice for us in a, in a, as Clementine and we put it in again. I thought that was kind of cool. Jared just dropped out, I think. Yeah, I'm. the internet is breaking. Everything's sad. <laughs> it's re rearranged everyone's names again. <laughs> um... I might just uh, turn the cameras off for a little bit because they seem to be having brain issues. That's okay. Um, Do we know how much of uh, that other game we want to show? <laughs> no. I have no idea. 
I have an idea. I'll I'll type it in Slack. I'm going to try and actually solve the trivia game. Okay. We lost game audio. Oop. Oop. Well, that's bad. Sorry about that. I think I killed game audio. I said in the chat that we are. We can, all, we can still hear it. We can just hum the theme. <laughs> Forgotten yeah, about the, the webcams whole, uh... were turned off on purpose. The, the voice was not, but it's back. The jazz has returned. Good job, Jake. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> Uh, I can leave the webcams on. They're just going to be the wrong people. Whose idea was it to have a giant head, stone head of Abraham Lincoln as like a recurring character? I know it was Steve's idea to have the, the statue. I thought it would be but... fun to play this trivia quiz. We, would, we will reuse we absolutely anything <laughs> uh, from a previous season. Sounds like fun to me. You know, it's a part yeah, of that whole um, have a blast continuity and wanting to know justice. what happens to everyone, including the villain from the last season. <laughs> and uh, I think his head gets knocked off right at the end of at the end of season one. You're not enjoying. And then it was nice to have a she have a little romance going on. Episode episode four, and then I think right. his head is on the moon. Right? Says yes. Oh. I'm sure you're right too, dear. He's a prismatologist. Right. Too aggravating. <laughs> oh no, this is fine, Abe. I'm just Great. enjoying being here with you. If I were yeah, how does he move? Abe, we don't we don't ever see him move from that location to location. Which is out. You should let Lincoln see the nope. real you. Yeah, God's plan to assume that he does. I wonder how he moves. It sounds like something Max would Why ask. Are you giving out relationship <laughs> advice, Max? I just want to see a good cat fight. Am I going to try it? I'm going to try it. The relationship between them was one of the threads, I think, that was in the season overview from the very beginning. It's like, okay, every episode... We have to track, like, where are they going to be in their in their romance? How's that all going to go? Yeah, I, I liked that the, that you started the romance thing in 104 and then it carried over into this, like, it literally started with her having a dating service in her office and wanting to find a man. And then it became a bigger arc for her in, in season two. Do you know the answer to the trivia question? I'd rather not say. I'm kind of competitive. That's okay. We're not. Why? What do you think the answer is? Do we know how to solve this, this uh, puzzle? It's something other than just picking the correct answer, I'm sure. Yeah, if I remember <laughs> correctly, the bug always says that it's... D? He I always says the same thing. The bug yeah. always picks the same letter. Sybil always gets it right. And I think Abe always does whatever you think the right answer is. No, he always agrees with Sybil. He always agrees with Sybil? Yeah. So you have to you have to do it so no, each person you, you change his mind, that's right. We think it's D. Hmm. Good to know. See ya, Sybil. This is a good logic thing. Hiya, Stinky. If that is your real name. Uh, who are you two again? Sam and Max, did, freelance did police. Did you have different designers working in different locations? It like, so right on our frequent somebody owns cards, Stinkies and somebody owns devil as organ donor cards. the North oh, yeah. Pole or whatever? Or how do you divide the work up? Grandpa warned like me about you two when he left the uh, restaurant. Not on the, something not on the about design side. That would be more, the writing would work that way. The design was all more of a, um... Just a in the room collab between all the all the designers, and we would sort of hammer on whatever puzzles weren't working at that particular time, and, and we would um, we would sort of work from top down, high concept to fine details, and also from the back of the game backwards towards the front, from your goals to your solutions. Um, 
and you know somebody would have the idea for a puzzle but there was not a lot of sort of individual ownership on that front but then uh you know like um i think brendan always wrote all of bosco's dialogue and mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so it's so people would would divide things up What's by scene on? when uh, a lot of people they're actually going to write. It's a trivia contest. It's fun. People get to show off how little they know, and I get to show off how much I know. That doesn't sound like much incentive to play. Shows what you know. Oh, and there's a big prize too. Um, we have a question in the chat. What were each of your relationships with Sam and Max prior to first working on these games, and how has that changed for you in the time since? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Um, I was given a copy of Surf on the Highway by a boyfriend when I was 20. And then we broke up. But I kept the book because um, I got the sense that it was worth some money. <laughs> and um, Nice, damn. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think when I first met Steve Purcell, which was at the press event where Telltale announced that they had acquired the Sam Max license, I told him that story. And he's like, yeah, that's great. Um, but yeah, I had, I was not really into Sam and Max. I was actually a Sierra fan. So, um, when I went to work for at Telltale and everybody else was a LucasArts fan, I quickly had to get up to speed and dig out that book and read it and learn about Sam and Max. Dave, you should go next. Because I know your story is better than mine. Sure. <laughs> this is Dave. Yeah. I, so I was a, I was a comic book nerd as a kid and I, my first exposure was picking up the Sam and Max comics at my local comic store and loving them. And then later I started work at uh, LucasArts, then Lucasfilm in 1989. And um, they took me down to the art pit to introduce me around to the artists down there. And I met Steve for the first time and was like, oh, holy cow, you're Steve Purcell. You make those Sam and Max comics. Those are fantastic. And he, you know, sort of, he's a pretty low key guy like, thanks. And then, uh, and then he tried to introduce me to Brent Anderson, who was another, like, an even more well-known comics artist at the time. And I didn't have any idea who, who Brent was. And I think um, Brent and I never really clicked after that. I think he held that against me for the rest of our time there. <laughs> <laughs> Good. What's the prize for the uh, trivia contest? If anyone wins... They get my ancient I knew Sam and Max because the Sam Max comics course. ran in the LucasArts Adventurer quarterly like, <laughs> magazine thing that was packed in with, uh, with any video game you'd buy. Monkeys. And then I found Boot out monkeys. that um, it's just an I lived in the same town as Steve Purcell and he frequented my same comic book store. And I found that out because there was some old San Diego Comic-Con merchandise uh, just sitting in the store. And the owner said, oh, yeah, Steve Purcell drops this stuff off when he comes back from Comic-Con if it's unsold. And uh, that freaked me out that someone that I whose work I like existed as a human, as like a person. Um, <laughs> and uh, around that time, I was also making a Sam Max fan page on the Internet. And uh, I wrote Steve an email and said, hi, I live in your town. And he said, oh, hey, you made a Sam Max page that like looks nice, which was rare in the early age of the Internet. And that was how I, I tricked Steve into knowing who I was. Um, <laughs> I think I had the same introduction to Sam and Max as Jake, through Adventurer, that was published with the LucasArts games. And I think I sought out some of the comic books uh, probably around the same time. And uh, But I was I didn't have the opportunity to meet Steve in Petaluma, but so I lived 3,000 miles away. But... Um, I specifically moved across the country so I can get a job at LucasArts and because I wanted to work on that type of game. How do you play? It's That's cool. easy. That's Just funny. I had the same experience. I'll read a question. Them you the adventurer the and then playing at the road. I'll review the answers. And then, and then begging Dan uh, to give me a job. Else. You can choose a team if you want. Until I finally got hired. Sam, and... pick me! Pick me! Then I worked at LucasArts for a while, and then I left to go work on the third Toe Gem and Earl game, and then came back to work on yeah. Freelance Police, and well, actually before Whee! that it was the second Full Throttle. That tanked, Let's and then I got moved to Freelance Police, and then they fired all of us, <laughs> and Telltale happened. Well... Which, what's that third date? 
on that trivia. That's the cancellation of Santa Max Freelance Police, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. That number shows up a lot of times in this. Uh, okay, I, so 1812 is correct. I don't remember which one the bug always guesses. I told Lincoln it's D. Randy, do you remember what the bug always guesses? I think the bug says B. B? C. I'm remembering Brandon going B. It's Randy B. says C. C. He says C? All right, listen to Randy. Because the answer? Okay. Or Let's what he guesses? Everyone's answers. We'll start with you, Sybil. I chose A. The bug always of guesses D, according to Jasper Pie 92. Because you're wrong. Oh. I also chose A. All right. Oh, you have to. <laughs> get, you have to. I think you have to talk to Lincoln on the side and tell wrong. him the you're wrong. D. And D. The bug right. Otherwise, he'll invoke whatever Sybil says. That yeah. is wrong. You have to first. Lincoln agrees with Sybil, and we then you have to me. undermine uh, his relationship. Did you pick an answer and then average with his it out? Girlfriend. Because that is very, very wrong. Flashy Clementine says Only that March third is Sam's birthday. I don't think that's canon. I think that's something that is. See, like an offhand joke see? in one of these games. That's just not true. All right. Next question. I don't think Lucas Arts like purposely canceled their game on Sam's Tuesday birthday. And Thursday. What is it? A, the, the bug chooses D. Am B, I wrong? Yeah, the bug chooses yeah, D. Choose D. C, okay. Day. So wait, is Stinky's whole thing face. here that she just lies, and if you leave any of the answers unchosen, yes, then yeah, she right. says that's great. Okay, to, okay. okay. Yeah, yes. now I'm understanding. <laughs> yes, no one, no <laughs> one wins a trivia designed. question. Sybil always knows the right answer because Sybil is an actual smart and worldly person. Uh, the bug just screams D every time, uh, and Lincoln will pick what Sybil picks unless you tell him that Sybil is wrong and you know better, and then he listens to you. And then you can all pick right. the missing, you have to find the hole in between all of those and pick that as your answer. Uh, and I think Sam and Max go last, so they're yeah. always they're always correct if there's only one thing left and that you paint stinky into a corner. So I'm pretty sure how that works. Um, I've got to look at it again. We're going to, we're going to win this though. I believe. And in what this. are we trying to do? We're trying to win a horseman. Of she the has apocalypse. one of the horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay. Wednesday. Some reason B. she doesn't want to give it away. I don't, I didn't ask her about it. Dave, I'm not going to learn the reasons behind this <laughs> stuff. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to know. Um, I always want to know these. I should probably I should probably learn, but it's too late. Um, Twenty three. Dave, what is your Lincoln? favorite Sam and Max episode Mr. X to design? President? Hmm. Oh, oh, right. It's you two. Hmm? Wow. It's a good question. Choose um, between your children. Want to compare notes on the trivia contest? Choose between my children. Oh, I think it's it's doing. gonna be a season Actually, one one because I was more hands on with that. Here, guys. And it was probably the one where Max becomes president. The fourth fourth episode. Um, That's a good one. Just a, a, yeah, a lot went right with that one. We changed the structure a little bit so there were sort of more acts, a little bit more twistiness in the middle. We think um, I loved all the administrative right. powers that uh, that Max gets when he becomes president. That's just super See, fun yeah. to, to do Represent. all that stuff. So. Now, there's a reason why we eventually made that be the one that we gave away for free to entice people to try the rest of the seasons. We kind of thought it was the best one. It was the one where you kind of hit your stride. The first the first one was the first one, and then two and three were, were kind of... Well, so by, by the time we got to that one, we were... We were going pretty crazy hey, just from the workload of, I chose B. you know, we were, oh, we were still playing, putting the finishing touches on, on the yeah. first episode and um, I chose uh, C. directing the oh, second one and, and writing the third one and designing the fourth right. one <laughs> Which you're simultaneously. Not. And we, I think we brought in Chuck <laughs> around that time no, to uh, not. just to help us not die while we were making them. We chose A. Um, no, he wrote that great, uh, that great song the elaborate song that goes on for like oh, two and a half minutes and Jared did like a ton of music and we all got into a bunch of trouble because then we had to make art for it all <laughs> i remember great brendan, moment. Saying, brendan saying that like he thought it was going to be easy because it would just be secret service agents and they would just stand there and sing and be very boring does he have any cool action it turned features? out to not be you don't know not be that at all that's interesting because the same voices that were 
um, letting us have it for creating too much content, or also the ones who said, no, you can't do that because that'll be too boring to watch and it has to be more exciting than that. So. Um, I'm going to roll the giveaway for the floaty pen now. Floaty pen giveaway time. Yeah. Mercy Bow Zero. Nice. Congrats on winning an insanely rare thing. Thing. And we'll keep the giveaway open. Um, if you haven't yet, type an exclamation point giveaway because the last one's going to be for that Surf on the Highway book, and we'll do that at once. In 10 minutes. It's amazing how much of Ice Station Santa I have forgotten at this point. I feel like I remembered it better before we started remastering it. The competing memories of it, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> yes. Flint's still in here. Flint, showdown at Santa's workshop. You in? Sorry, chums, I got a rendezvous with He's my really given that kind of business. A lady client? You know it, pal. If things work out, you're looking at one private dick who's gonna end up on the naughty list. I remember I never had time to play the game at work because I had work Flint, to do. Can we ask and you a few questions? It was a It'd really help us uh, out. Not you a race build. It was like the help. first time that there you was a playable build, and somebody burned it onto a CD. I, I want to say I was about to say floppy disk, but clearly it was not a floppy disk. Someone burned it onto a CD for me, and I brought it home, and I think I played it all in one sitting on like a Friday evening immediately after returning home from work and I loved it. It was so it was great. I hope we have uh, I hope we get to the to the driving Buck game up, because Max. I remember we'll being see really nice for that. I know Sam, but I was hoping to hit him up for some cash first. When was the last time each of you played a Sam and Max game for fun? If you play your own stuff for fun, that is. <laughs> uh, I replayed a bunch of The Devil's Playhouse at the start of the work on The Devil's Playhouse Remaster. And it started off as fun, and then it became uh, different uh, after, <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> Where are the other I had never played the... season three, and Jake and I started playing it together. And, uh, yeah. Where to, <laughs> it was Sam? pretty buggy. Yeah, season three is hilarious and really well put together, but we're when you're playing it with an cool. eye towards, oh, we're going to remaster this, uh, your brain, it's hard to it's hard to enjoy it. I didn't go to Bosco's. Is there, are there horsemen? There's, there's four. Bosco's inside the name tron. Yeah, in the package. <laughs> Inside the main oh, no. tron. Boxing. What? Oh, wait boxing. a minute. No, no, hold on. Where is oh, yeah. <laughs> the boxing prize? The boxing Let's Betty. Let's back to civilization, or what's left of it. Watching us fail to remember how to play this game is probably not uh, <laughs> the most thrilling entertainment of all time. Bosco has a horseman and the main tron, and in the cops. CTV right here. The cops have one. They're not here yet. Oh, do I have to click on it? Probably. <laughs> it's a point and click. Who made this game? They don't just reveal themselves. Ah. Uh, Watch this. You've just the been rewarded for exploring. The Computer Obsolescence Prevention Society. The cops are obsolete no longer. Welcome to the grand opening of Pimp Le Car. Seal with a Chris says, watching you waddle around is going to vindicate. How exclusive. I wish Jared was still here. <laughs> That's Jared. Yeah, all of the cops are Jared. Uh, so do you know anything characters. about cars? If we didn't, why would we open a car shop? Because you're lonely, forgotten machines who do anything to feel useful? Processing. Oh dear. Input appears valid. I just had a breakthrough. This is all about my dad! Oh man, I forgot that the music during conversations on the street is just a drum solo. Good. Jared's very good, by the way. He makes good stuff. We'd like to pimp our car. 
please make a selection from the following menu. If you'd like the exclusive Death Horseman hood ornament, press 1 now. Valiant and Cheese asks who handed else? the posters in the background yeah, of the auto shop. I think it was Brian Gillies, who was the environment artist who did most Probably of the work on the street, but I'm not 100% sure. Also offer a wide range of yeah, maybe Brian. Either Brian or Kim Lyons. Either Brian or Kim. Yeah. <clears throat> I was going to say, that seems like a thing Brian would think is funny. Either of them would think any of this stuff is funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, the street, the office, and Bosco's. I think Kim did the office interior and Bosco's interior. And Sybil's interior, and then Brian did the street, and then I don't know who did Stinky's. I don't remember. If there was an auto body shop, I can't imagine we wouldn't have let Brian do that. Because <laughs> he's probably true. so into the cars. He'd love to build all the vehicles for all the games, and it's just super interesting. He built that DeLorean, which is He built totally the back of awesome. future DeLorean, yeah. Yep. Um, but, we have a question in the chat. Uh, do you remember who was responsible for the tic tac toe puzzle in uh, the first season? Who did tic tac doom? Tic -tac -doom. Oh, yeah. Tic -tac -doom. I don't know who designed it. Brennan I and I worked that one out together. Hey, my missing boxing glove. <laughs> yeah. Who did it, Dave? That was me and Brendan. Um, Jimmy Tucci. Brendan and I. Um, I'm just trying to remember. We, we, um, we just, the idea occurred to us, like, what if you had to lose the game of tic-tac-toe against somebody who was deliberately trying to lose, you just played the whole thing backwards. And then we just sat down and worked out all the mechanics, and it just happened to work really well. It actually made a good puzzle. Like, okay. Trying to lose guess tic tac toe is actually really hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tic Tac Doom yeah, is maybe really the hardest Tic Tac Toe variant uh, that, that uses that, that doesn't change any of the rules other than it's it's harder than trying to win. Yes. Yeah, it took long, longer to implement that that way than it would have if you it implemented it the regular way. Yeah, There's I mean regular Tic Tac Toe is like a thing you do in Intro to Computer Programming, but <laughs> yes. But Tic Tac Doom. Um, I was like, yeah, I can do this. No. <laughs> Eternity of Saturdays wants to know who came up with the idea for Sam to smack Max out of the way when you run into him. So just just recently, someone told me they thought that was Jake, and then Jake said he didn't think it was him. Does anyone know who came up with that? I don't know, like I think it was Kevin. Kevin. Maybe Kevin? Yeah. It seems like Kevin. I know uh, it, you guys said that. He didn't it was want to hear from you. Or you. We, were, we were going round and round about all these um, ways to have him avoid the... Uh, um, avoid all the other characters and um, specifically avoid Sam and what were we going to do and then I was talking to you and maybe maybe I said it just kind of flippantly like just have him smack him out of the way and put him back in some random place where he's okay and then you were like okay <laughs> and then the next yeah. day it was done <clears throat> yeah because it was an easy solution to a complicated problem I remember Ken, Kevin showing it to me the day that it got implemented, but he was reacting to it like someone who was seeing it and thought it was clever and not like someone who had done it himself. Hmm. Randy's like, whatever. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. <laughs> probably right. I have to actually like try at this, which is tough. Oh my gosh! Her first is this real like one like... of the first things that that Mark Darren worked on, I think. Yeah, I think Mark built this. Mark. Uh, yeah, he did. Mark was on um, CSI. And then, and then he did the sequel. So this might have been like the first Santa Max thing he did. Yeah. Right, and then he did the surfing game and drove me insane. Yes, oh, I was going to say the sequel to this is, is uh, Snake Boxer in Strong Bad. Oh, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Major The Devil's Play has spoilers, but how did you come up with the ending for 305? You might need to oh, save no. that question for a future stream. <laughs> Bring it on. Ready? Fight. No, you can turn these off in the accessibility menu. Ouch! Knockout. You should turn these off, I'll excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, we did we did we make just them skippable. Now. The entire puzzle. 
Donnie Cheese says the Snake Ox are. Copies for I, PlayStation or Xbox. I um, believe in myself, you guys. I think we don't know the answer to that question. Right. We we did do the Switch with limited run on PC, and that's pretty much all we can say at this point. Ah, oh, Boxing Betty. Boxing Betty's the new champion. It's the super exclusive war action figure with extra. Hmm. There I love the little animation of Jimmy running I don't away. I see the weapons of mass destruction. The weapons of mass Jimmy destruction joke. When did this game come out? 2007 <laughs> joke. <laughs> I'm no expert, Jimmy, but I bet being a loser helped. I loved on 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 Discord the other day. Somebody was saying. Was it Venture Brothers? They were saying, I think Venture Brothers copied nice something out of Sam and Max and was somebody saying I did not have sexual Jimmy's relations with that woman. Huh. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, it was an interesting moment on the Sam and Max Discord to have to link to the Clinton Lewinsky scandal Wikipedia page. I'm gonna do it. 1999. Hang on a second, Jimmy. Are there any the Devil's Play has dialogue changes? I believe not. Uh there are a kind of in oh. that we found little bits of dialogue here and there that actually fell into Max, holes in the this is like, disagree, in the logic Sam. and never played. So there's lots of uh, there's not lots. There's a couple little extra look at or places where you can use a max power to see something that you should have been able to click on, but like an object was occluding it from the camera. And uh, Randy and John found a bunch of those and put them back in the game. I keep saying a bunch like it's a big promise. There's a few. There's a there's a handful of little lines here and there. <laughs> And the day after it comes out, we'll make a list. Of you say about half a dozen, Randy? Yeah, I think so. Like 60, like... 60 new lines, three hours of cut content. No, there's, yeah, it's it's like a half a dozen <laughs> extra little little bits and bobs. We Is did not Kiss change any dialogue. Added? No. <laughs> I want to make that very clear. <laughs> Might we see the Nutrospecs from the PS3 release this time around? Who can say mm -hmm. if you'll see the Nutrospecs? This time see. around, who knows? I mean, we do. <laughs> you will. Secret. Wasn't there a joke in the Devil's Playhouse when, where Max mentions how poor Donald Trump is? When Max mentions what? How poor? Max mentions how poor Donald Trump is. I'm assuming that's being taken out due to how badly it aged. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, he did, probably he was bankrupt around that time. I mean, Donald yeah, Trump could be joke. poor right now. We don't know. <laughs> it's a fair bet that he's bankrupt at any given time. So, <laughs> I, I actually trust Max to assess Donald Trump's financial state better than many other people. Nothing uh, says inconvenient. Real and fictional. Like Full body search Max for president. Can buy candy, cigarettes, and all day suckers. Yes, Max will be rerunning for president in 2024. <laughs> he thinks he has a shot. Bosco, your disguise. It's for, it's, for those it's who were not. Claw my alive and on the internet back in 2006, we actually it. had, uh, we owned Max for President first, or buddy. Max had a I'm campaign website there. A you could join his, his wow. super pack. I forgot how ugly you were without a wig or hat or something. Shh, my package. Uh, see you, Bosco. Shh. I'm gonna roll the, um, the last giveaway. So everyone uh, type in exclamation point giveaway if you haven't yet. This is for the, the paperback copy of Surf on the Highway, which has been on my shelf for many years. And now I will pass Suddenly, it on to you. This is steps. not the one that was given to I me by my ex-boyfriend. So I've got a couple of walls upstairs devoted to you two. I actually forget what I'm supposed to do. I mean, we should probably call it reasonably soon on yeah. PlayStation Santa. Say Let me check in and see if our secret guys, surprise guest is going to join us. Does my package sound like it's ticking to you? Not your best pickup line, Bosco. Oh, I don't know. I think my package is the bomb. Now that's a pickup line. Who would send you a bomb? My mother, of course. She sends me one every year around this time. Families need traditions. So why don't you just get rid of it? Prize guest. I built that bomb disposal unit for that very purpose. So why don't you just get rid of it? Because it might be the billion dollar plunge I just ordered. What a dilemma. All right. See you, Bosco. 
I remember. I remember how the video game works. You gonna play through this puzzle, or do you wanna? I we can stop. We'll stop playing the video game. I'm gonna save though. All right, I'm gonna roll the giveaway. I'm gonna pause uh, the game a couple times because it's my favorite thing that I added to the remaster. The letter L28 is the winner of the book. You just like the sound effects, is that what you mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's funny to me. I'm glad that I'm a simple happy. person, Randy. I hear a cartoon bong <laughs> sound effect. I'm, I'm entertained. <laughs> so what I think we should do is, um, which. Put up your your coming soon for a minute so we can get our special guest situated while you switch games. Okay, I'm gonna. All right. Am I? Uh... What are we What are we playing? You gonna play some Fortnite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly, John. OG Fortnite. We play some Lego Fortnite. No, pins are gone. Hunter Loper. We have some Thimbleweed Park trading cards. I got to say, I'm a little disappointed in the, the lack of Santa Max to Thimbleweed Park uh, crossover. It's probably because I failed as a PR person. But um, <laughs> if you don't know, Thimbleweed Park was a game made by Ron Gilbert, who created Monkey Island, and it's in the style of Maniac Mansion, and it's really good. And for $15, you could get a mini box, which is like a Barbie sized Thimbleweed Park box that has a Steam key in it and a, and a trading card. And you could vote on who is your best, the favorite soda popper. You're trying, you're trying, Emily. <laughs> Doing my job. <laughs> oh, there, Dave's going to show you the, the, the oh, power of the mini, yeah, the, the mini box. The mini box. If I can show it. <laughs> I love it so much. I think I've ruined, Dave, I've ruined all visuals, so I can't actually show them. Oh, no. Oh, no. <gasps> Dave was well, I've got it right here. If they, if they ever come back, I can... Uh... We also have 29 Back to the Future poster prints remaining. I guess we now know uh, how much people love Back to the Future compared to Santa Max. <laughs> Good. Just saying. But th they cleaned everything else out pretty much. Uh, Walking Dead Vinyl soundtrack is still there. And then Blue Park Cross the Chiefs are still there. So. Samuel X fans really turned out uh, and uh, really cleared us out and helped us clean our closets. Can they still hear us or am I just talking to myself? Oh, they can hear you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so now is when I'm supposed to start talking about the secret stuff, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Now you can start talking about secret stuff. Um... Oh, and you've got a great still of me holding the very blurry yes. <laughs> the tiny box. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Yeah. Our secret guest has entered the room. Nobody yes. knows yet who he is. No, uh, I'm going to mute secret? us and we'll be back in a sec, everyone. Okay. Are we muted? Okay. Uh, All right, Chuck. You it's can Chuck. turn your camera on. Chuck, are you, are you with us? I think so, maybe. I hear you. Do you wish to be perceived? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I can. I mean, everyone else has video. I almost never do, but let me see if I've. There we hey, go. There he is. Yeah, hey, people, Jack. People hey, Jack. Hear him for some hey, reason. Jack. I'm ruining it. Oh, I'm not muted. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yes, spoilers. Oh, either either they guessed or they figured it out somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Well, of all the things that could have gone wrong on the stream, that's minor. <laughs> We can we cannot see anyone for what it's worth. Oh my god! Hi, Chuck. We can't see anything. Now you've just not been muted. Dave's blurry. The movie right. park card. <laughs> are we muted now? I think I'm seriously oversold okay. the special part. What were we supposed to ask Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan. Oh, oh. See, you're no, seeing, we are not we want to send you a copy of season two. Do you still want the same as last time, and is your address still the same? 
Uh, <laughs> I have to check. I don't actually know. We moved. <laughs> okay. I'll hit you up on uh, So Good. I think we should just do it on the live stream. It's, uh, <laughs> okay. While you're you at it, why don't you give us your social security screen? number and your credit cards? <laughs> yeah, we're still okay. we're still live. Okay. You can answer the question about um, what was your experience with Salmon Max before you got involved with making Salmon Max games. I think we're still live. They can still hear us. I, two minutes ago, they could. In the chat, they're saying they can hear everyone. Yes, they can hear us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. me. Can I can I lobby to be the, the permanent face of the changing the stream settings? Just burn me into the thing right there. It'll be great. Um, yeah, I think mine is the same as Jake and John and Randy's, where... I got to be a big fan of Sam and Max from the adventure. Um, uh, and then went to LucasArts and was like fanboying over Steve Purcell. And uh, oh, actually, I should say from the adventure, I went to uh, the local comic book store in Athens, which is still a thing, and got uh, all the Sam and Max comics and just became hugely obsessed with them. And then yeah, I played Hit the Road, and when I went back to Athens just a few years ago, I went, and they still have a special section devoted to Steve and all of his stuff. And there wasn't much Sam and Max left, but there was some of his the other things that he's done, including uh, Defenders of Dinatron City. I think they had that. Mm. Oh, wow. So probably the same as the other guys are just uh, LucasArts and then uh, Sam and Max fanboy. And, and check my memory of of your body of work at LucasArts is that I never finished Grim Fandango because I got stuck on an elevator that moved too fast, and you told yep. me that that was your fault. Yep. Yeah, they, well, I mean, <laughs> technically, uh, you could also say that it's LucasArts' fault for giving me a 386. While <laughs> um, uh, it was, there's a the that puzzle in particular wasn't um time or frame rate it was frame rate dependent mm -hmm. so that plus the credits in the original version if you played on my computer they were perfectly timed like to the point of i spent over a day on it making sure that everything was timed to the beat of the music but if you played it on a pentium then it went by it went by like a blip bar I think it was hyperbole. I think they. I think I had a forty-six, but it was. <laughs> it was definitely not the state of the art. Like my computer at home was faster than the computer I had at work, and that was on a LucasArts salary. So <laughs> that's how I got hired. Actually, I uh, got full throttle to run on my three eighty-six, and they were impressed. <laughs> <laughs> It was like you and Aaron Giles, where Aaron had just privately ported everything over to the Mac and said, like, what? Like, it's hard? <laughs> I know, right? We got a question in, in chat. Is there anything that surprised you positively or negatively when revisiting the games for remastering? There are probably a lot Did of I things. Mention Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no.
Mm. Just to summarize, your 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 positive surprise was that the games were actually good. <laughs> You know what we should have done is played the like the Jurgen dance loop or something while they were waiting, just on loop forever. <laughs> we were muted that entire time now, so no one heard any of that. <laughs> hey, there we are. <laughs> Jake, you're muted. Apparently. <laughs> so was I muted that entire time and no one else was? Yeah, apparently. Okay, good. I didn't want anyone else to hear saying. me. <laughs> good so, thing no one heard anything that I just said. Right. Chuck, welcome. We're back. Yeah, Chuck's here. Chuck Jordan is here. <laughs> How much of all that stuff that Jake just said is like, is like legal, illegal? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody heard that, right? <laughs> Jake, I can't believe you just said that. Oh, I, I revealed so much. Okay. Oh, welcome. Glad to have you join us. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, you quit the game? No. <laughs> Did you, did it's a good thing that I put. Good thing I put any time into rearranging the videos. <laughs> they all just got rearranged. <laughs> They're all gonna be broken again. Don't worry about it. Everything's okay. fine. It's um, fine. Everything's good. Chuck, what's your cap's name? Uh, it's Pazuzu. Paz it's Pazuzu. Pazuzu. <laughs> and he loves to pick the best time to jump on my desk. And <laughs> so we were just playing the uh, the ice station Santa. Chuck, do you have memories of what you did on Ice Station Santa? You told me you came in kind of partway through. I thought I did, but once I started looking at clips, I realized that I did not do as much as I remembered. <laughs> um, I think I did some just like pickup dialogue and. Uh, did you do the uh, Mametron at the opening? Maybe. <laughs> it seems like a thing you would put in a video game. <laughs> I yeah, that was definitely like... you, Chuck. I remember. Okay. Because I love those songs. Yeah, it was speaking in so 80s weird. song lyrics. Yep. Yeah, I think maybe the gag was there, but the actual lyrics I had to fill in. So it felt like a lot of it. It was kind of similar to uh, 104, where uh, all the design stuff was already done, and I just came in to write. And then what were you doing the before that? I'm sorry? What were you doing before that? Why were you not on it from the beginning? Like I, I remember. Contracting uh, on season one. Oh. Um, but I had like I was working with doing contract stuff for Imagineering too. Ooh. So, Sharing you with Disney. Yeah, I didn't come on till I didn't come on full time until two, oh, like the end of two hundred one or mid two hundred one. One sec, I'm still trying to remember how computers work. <laughs> so we're gonna um, in a in a few minutes we're going to just show a little tiny piece of the penal zone, <laughs> which is a game that Chuck, you were the the lead on that one, right? Uh, yes. So I did a season-long outline and then script and design for the 301 and 305. Was that, that a different was linchpin of the third season? Was it was it different working on um, 
season three than on the earlier seasons. I feel like season three is is very different and like some time had passed in Telltale's like season one came out, uh, season two came out in like 2007, 2008 and season three didn't come until 2010. So that's like dog years. That's like Telltale had advanced a decade in that, in that period. So how was the process different? Am I misremembering that we did a uh, strong bad in between season yep. two and three? Yeah, Strong Bad and Wallace and Gromit and Monkey Island were all in between. Okay, yeah, I think it the just the basic idea was that like two followed so closely, season two of Sam and Max followed so closely off season one that it was kind of a uh, let's repeat the formula and then just like go deep and in, deep into the um, wackiness of the of the of the premises and just like get as much milk as much variety as you can out of the the early Telltale model, and then the kind of the marching order for by the time season three came out was uh, to do it like, you know, keep the same basic idea, but make it like a new thing, a self-contained thing, and, mm -hmm. and build off, especially, it felt like it was building especially off of what we did, in, or what y'all did, I should say, and Tales of Monkey Island. Which is what? Well, just the like the, the all the improvements to the tool that had happened, and then, mm. um, like click the... and drag to move instead of point mm. and click, one of the best design decisions ever put in a. <laughs> <laughs> and then just I th I felt like the the um, idea of the just the the season structure also was kind of it, it felt like there was a, a intention to have the seasons feel more like. A little bit more like an ongoing story, and a little bit, a little bit less episodic. I mean, obviously there are still episodes. Okay, I think I have a computer game that can work. Um, I'm not really sure how to show this or what to show because the game is extremely in the middle of being ripped apart and put back together. Um, Through the, tutor the tutorial on the. Or is that easier said Do than I done? want to show that? I don't know. Do you? <laughs> uh, might, well, might skip. What I mean, do you guys have a preference for anything? Randy, what do you think? John? Uh, anything in 301 is fine. Just depends on what you want to show. I was going to start on the street and skip the prologue stuff, but we can do it. It's only just like parts of that are just going to fall apart. It's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Compared to the other stuff. It's I, I don't know. We, do we want to give that much away? There's some pretty big changes in there. Okay. I I, I look to you guys. I, I Jake, you decide. Oh, geez. I don't know. I think going to the streets. Just go to the good. street corner because it yeah. looks so cool. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we can do a big Nutrispex reveal. Ooh. Nutrispex. Hey, um, <laughs> just show off the settings menu. Don't want to spoil the settings menu. Sure, whatever. Um, the settings menu looks really nice. Yeah, sure. All right, so let's play a little bit of the Devil's Playhouse, the remastered version, still um, in progress. As you can see, I will. I will. Once again, we're inside. Oh, shaders haven't been rebuilt. Oh, no. Looking around reveals that everything is a, a janky pile, but that's okay. Um, the anticipation. <laughs> 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 this is definitely going to be a dev mode experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, good, good job updating this for modern platforms. Yeah, what do you guys think? <laughs> this is a platform now. Um, um. I like how Max got Blair witched. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, all this stuff isn't final. It's good. Anyway. Um, Chunk. Yeah. One day, though. I think this looks awesome. I think that was really great. But um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this and we're going to go to 301 and I'm going to turn intro cutscenes on and. Just do this. If that's all right, unless folks want to do the whole thing. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't like going to say it was boring while Chuck was here, but. 
It's not boring. Like... It's so good. You guys are freaks. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh my gosh, this is horrible. I mean, that opening had to carry about the the weight of. It's on a controller. It's been years since the original. About hey, seven thousand executive this reviews. This toy I found just gave me an uncanny vision of our violent future. I know. I saw it too. Somehow. Did your version <laughs> have credits? It had a spaceship. People in a chat are asking for the opening credits. Jar, the opening credits are like an explosion of trying to destroy the game city. assets falling over each mean? other. So we're not going to show yeah, it today. Not ready. <laughs> Also, the color grading on this whole thing isn't done yet, so uh, it'll look. The colors will look different by the time we're done. <laughs> oh my god! This is epic. <laughs> That was always the best thing about Telltale was just coming up with a like vague idea and then saying like, oh yeah, they they made it. <laughs> Handing it off to people who had to make it. Creatures of Earth. And the other thing about season three is it's full of very Happy. dated references. Hear my words. Um, the Skunk Tape's costume and spaceship were both heavily influenced by Zardoz. With a message of peace and love. Right, influenced by what? Zardoz. Uh, I don't know what that is. Sorry about oh, it's a uh, 70s, <laughs> very, very weird and dumb 1970s sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. um, what could it all mean? Where, uh, with uh, Sean Connery, where he spent the entire movie wearing a little, uh, seem a bit basically jock strap with bandolier but straps. No basically this. He's wearing <laughs> this. There's not... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ahead of itself. Let's it was very formative for young Chuck, and that's all I'll say. <laughs> Our story begins 25 minutes ago on a street very much like this one. Very, very much like, like this one. one. Yeah, like symbols is there. So is this three flashbacks in or what? I forget. I lo I lose track. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This yeah, is three, the three one's opening is deranged yeah. in that way. Oh boy. Not done. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching this being like, oh boy, okay, not. Damn. No, we're not in the office. But yeah, three one opens with a flashback. It wasn't my fault. This and then we flash to the present, flash and then forward. flash back again. But the future that we saw at the beginning was maybe just a potential One future of many. Crack in the street, it's good. Those pansies from City Hall shut down the whole block. Those things where we introduced the characters felt very, um, like people were very concerned that it's been two years and we might forget who Sam and Max are. So we have to inform new players who they are. Uh, yeah, I wish that they weren't there. <laughs> because there's such there it's like it's one more layer of stuff but then like yeah. in episode five when suddenly the entire other half there of the season two cast the comes tumbling in and they get title and then cards you do it it's, again. it's like it's, a, it's <laughs> being a really cool callback yeah the brain is dying <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> I'll have to call you back, Commissioner. Max has psychic powers now, apparently. The lighting That's makes a huge difference, difference on this scene in particular. Now, where were we? Something yeah, looks about good. a spaceship. And I remember specifically going to John and trying to describe what the teleportation effect could look like. And it was not as bad as 305, but it was still the same of like a mishmash. A vague mishmash of like things I vaguely remembered from the early '80s. <laughs> so it was Kirby dots from the comics, yep. plus the swirly when you go inside the O in the HBO promo. Yeah. And <laughs> there's all those light lines. <laughs> um, it was like, yeah, just combine those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember the Kirby dots. I was that was definitely a challenge to try to figure out how to do that, but I was into it. Max mode is a little janky right now. 
I didn't know what a Kirby dot was until I I was looking at the agent names and the the effects agent names, and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I looked it up, and I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, Jack Kirby. Yeah. yeah. Nice. This looks great. I was working on this yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's why you're showing it, right? Because it didn't work before yesterday. I'm, yeah, I'm showing, yeah, because it didn't work as of yesterday. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, as I, as I said earlier in this, we are actually playing this entirely inside the Telltale tool because we don't have builds of the Devil's Playhouse yet because it's still in progress. I mean, that does mean we can be dummies and start doing things that are fun to do only in uh, dev mode, like drag Sam around and ruin everything. I've done it. I've ruined it immediately. <laughs> oh, no. There you go. <laughs> Off to a horrible start. Um, oh, jeez. Undo. Does that work? No, just just walk. Back. I'm going to crash it instead. No, Walked it. Oh, there, I'm back. He's back. He's back. Find his way. Nope, but he's, he's in the walk boxes. <laughs> I've, I've really now made a mistake, Randy. Trying. Hold on. If you talk to Super Bowl, it won't just talk pop to him over there. Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. There you go. I have to walk Sorry about back that. there where you can't get out. That's weird. Yeah. President, you are the ruler of this planet? Oh, no. I'm just president of the United States. We're only one of many United Nations working together to here, achieve... Sir. You can speak freely. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in charge pretty much. Perfect. Just the one I wanted to see. He asked, what game engine is this? This is uh, the, the latest version of the Telltale Tool. This is the Skunk Ape Tool now. Thank you very much. <laughs> we took what came from uh, Walking Dead Season 4, and we've made a very, fairly large number of improvements to it. So, No catch. <laughs> All I ask in return <coughs> is your help. Roger and Jackson, it's the same. Or Skunk Ape, and he made this dialogue an work. He's just brilliant. He's uh, famously the screen voice, and I forget what other voices he did for uh, Oh Satan for mm. uh, for the the games, but he's just completely nails it. Yeah. Uh, is it the, the skunk ape tool or the skunk cafe tool? You'd like to know. Nobody knows. I mean, it's just a telltale <laughs> tool. We renamed it so we didn't have to say telltale tool all the time. Uh, Dan oh, and yeah. I never say things skunk cafe, so we don't either. Right? Uh, we thought it would be cool to put 2D, to make Sam in the dialogue selection 2D uh -huh. because he's 2D in all the other remastered dialogues. So we actually had an artist uh, named Callus who draws amazing Sam and Max fan art and it also works in 2D animation, make these. Um, they're still in progress, but um, she worked with Steve on the likeness, and then there's going to be a bunch of costume changes and stuff. So it looks nice. That looks That's my favorite Russia's thing. <laughs> the 2D <laughs> Sam. I, I love that. <laughs> One of hundreds of magical toys scattered throughout the galaxy by the Great Comet. It's believed to give the holder the power to see the future. What a coincidence! I was just... He was just saying how he wished he could see the future, so he and I would stop showing up to work wearing the same thing. It gets pretty awkward. I just wiggle this thing all around because it was annoying mm -hmm. to make work. Um... <laughs> just wondering, how much do you pay for security on a ship like that? Security? You know, oh, Kallus is in the chat. Kallus kind of Draw says, I, I'm so glad everyone thinks he looks cute. <laughs> That's terrific. I would thought it was um, Steve's drawings. Steve? Yeah. Um, Jasper Pye would like to know why you named the company after Skunk Ape. Uh, I think Dan just suggested it out of nowhere, and we didn't have a name, and I said yes, and then I... <laughs> realized and i was like was not let's the, not the call it that yeah like that's, that seems like a, a bad name actually and then the papers were already filed and that's the name of it like for many reasons yep. um you know i mean skunk ape the character was made by chuck and the writers on sam max season three that's not us also it's a character in a game we're releasing completely confusing bad name too late now stuck um oh well sorry uh <laughs> 
<laughs> it's fun. Um, There's a fun Skunk Ape logo that we made for the beginning of season three that people will see later. Uh, I saw. Um, I already. It's, it's Chad is scrolling very quickly. Um, Valiant Cheese asks, "How does Super Bowl know about the Toys of Power?" Chuck, do you want to actually talk about that? I know. I know you love talking about. Um, sort of obtuse Devil's Playhouse lore. So I, f <laughs> I feel like I should throw that to you. All right, we'll um, let you know I think it's just the idea is that After he knows everything. Bar, like he's security first. here, we tried to lean into the men in black thing. Oh, so just the government, however, tingly, whatever division of the government he works for this. now is just highly aware of everything alien related. <laughs> um, yeah, Super Bowl's knowledge sphere seems to just sort of grow constantly uh, until by the end of the season, uh, he's making difficult personal choices. It's as the plot warrants. <laughs> Oops, I guess I clicked on the subway. Hey, look, I got a dog too. Oh, hey. everyone's trying to get their pets. He just knocked my door down, so. <laughs> Is he a puppy or just very small? Just small. Cutie. Three, three years old, I think. The subway station is a weird one in that when we did the remaster of 205, we realized that the subway had already had a huge art pass from 301. So we stole a bunch of stuff from the season three remaster or the season three and put it in season two. And then we ended up stealing the remastered season two Sheesh, subway and put it back into season three. So there was this weird asset ping pong. That was true with a lot of, uh, fair, like the Mametron had that happen as well. Um, any of the characters who were in 205, lovers. Grandpa Stinky, I think they're maybe not Grandpa Stinky. I don't know. I don't know anything about Grandpa Stinky. Um, it was weird though, realizing when we were working on season two that season three had actually already done a visual pass on a bunch of this stuff. Um, somebody asked if there's going to be an accessibility setting to add black behind the the white text, like there is in the other seasons. It's already there. Hey. Does that work on the dialogue options too? Four square and Not yet. Brides ago. It's, a it's a good suggestion. Head. Sheesh, what will it um, and then there was another question. Have you worked on any other episodes or are they all unfinished? Positive, um, they're all being worked on. All them. They're all being worked yeah. on currently. <laughs> yeah, we're almost up with this one. <laughs> Two years on one episode. I always visit Pudding Lincoln because it's the most like deranged, thing, <laughs> nonsensical thing in the entire episode. I, I still understand you. why he's there. I, Who I, knows I why he's there, John? After I played this, play tested this, I wrote a long email to, to Chuck and Kevin with my feedback, and I think I held a whole paragraph about putting Lincoln and how scary I found him. A thing of nightmares. This gumball machine. That was great. And why does he have a secret prize? Are we going to get the Nutrospecs that were left out of the original PC version? We could be coy about that and say maybe you will. I think oh, we're, we're just trying to, try to sell more units and say, yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll notice that you can point and Rosemary. click now. Oh, I, I right clicked on a baby. Rosemary keeps wandering off and leaving this thing behind. I was surprised. I asked everybody on the team, and some of the people who contract with, with us are significantly younger, and they still got the Rosemary's Baby joke. Rosemary's Baby is timeless. It's just just Bill Clinton jokes have aged out of relevance, it turns out. But, uh... I have to remind myself that what to do next is always in the notebook, but it is always in the notebook. So um, the beginning of 301 has so much going on. You just get like thrown into the deepest deep end of the pool at the beginning of 301 in a way that is cool but disorienting if you don't remember where did the game is. where did the idea to include a notebook come from because that's something a lot of adventure games do but sam and max or i don't think telltale really had done that before so maybe remember. in csi Chuck, do you have any memory of why the notebook exists um that feels like a dave thing actually dave do you remember why the notebook exists? <laughs> Well, it's probably just part of the um, general accessibility um, of we want people to actually be able to get through the games and, and play them and finish them. And um, people don't solve puzzles in the same way, and we just want to have as many sort of backups for your memory 
possibly can. Terrible memory myself, and can uh, if I turn the game off and come back to it an hour later, I never remember what I was doing, and I like to have a little reminder to uh, just get me back on track again. That's what that's for. I think that we, Jake, kind of feels like there's not enough of that, and he keeps trying to get me to add more stuff to the notebook. <laughs> I, I strongly desire the to-do list from Return to Monkey Island to be in here. I thought that was such a clean uh, way of expressing multiple simultaneous goals, yeah. which season three has yeah. has just so much of. But I don't think we're going to get to. No, it. there's lots of times where you go to the notebook and it's not helping you at all. Yeah. Let's figure out how to do it eventually, Sam. He was awake in the a, lot of, a lot of work was put into that that, that to-do list, and it was all worth it, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the to-do list feature great. in Return to McAllen is great. Oh, oh the, the, the Max like one of those too. undulates still to tutorialize me. I didn't know that we still had that. I had forgotten about that gag that I think Dennis put in with, with the doors on the spaceship always slide a different have, direction there's never you yeah. never see the same door yeah it's outrageous i was wondering who was responsible for that that's a dennis dennis is also responsible for the horrible animation what is it in in 303 when sam slides under the, the hood of the car yeah disaster yeah yeah <laughs> People are going to be disappointed that we fixed that, but sorry. It was bad. How did you do it? Easy peasy. All it took was Stinky's demon broth and Mama Bosco's futuristic power core. Well, you heard the mean little buddy. We well, you heard the mean little buddy. We've got to find some demon broth and Mama Bosco's futuristic power core. Was it intended that each episode would have different toys, or was there a thought that you would be able to use these? toys in future episodes or am I, I wrong that future vision never comes back it comes back does it come back yeah I think the original like Sam, original outline for the season went harder on the idea that deaths. each episode had a, a, a psychic power that mm -hmm. it emphasized and like the first one was mostly about teleportation um and then you did the you know the Max. story kind of, of pushed itself deaths. to the foreground for that and the powers got a little bit uh, sidelined or i mean there's still a focus in every episode but it's less of that feel of like war. um i was thinking oh each each episode can be like its own you know a narbacular drop or whatever you know its own mechanic heavy indie game and when you have a heavily story driven puzzle <laughs> vacation uh, puzzle game that doesn't work quite as well, well so that's ominous but yeah the basic idea was so definitely i'm oh, sorry good i thought you were done so i was gonna add but you're not done so go ahead no i'm just gonna say you it, it the 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 original concept was that, you know, it is one power per episode, and that's it. Congratulations. But, uh, and then the beginning of this is just like an introduction to all of the ones that you're going to get before it turns into hardcore teleportation, so to speak. And also the stuff with the cops that, that seems to set up that you're going to be doing this crime tron type of stuff, and then it doesn't come back again. You're nodding knowingly, Chuck. <laughs> well, we were just trying to sort of generate some excitement for the season as a whole by sort of touching on, look at all these cool things you're going to be able to do. And then, mm -hmm. But those are all coming in future episodes. In the prologue? That's, I mean, that's like, it's like a James Bond thing where it's like Metroid. You see, it's, it's Max <laughs> fully powered before uh, whatever happens to him. Nothing. Mm -hmm. He's, before he saves everything. <laughs> Where he gets a, a troubling vision of the future. Yeah, I need to... all, all the stuff with Max's powers. I remember this was um, definitely part of Telltale's sort of growing restlessness with adventure games in general, and the desire to have some different kinds of mechanics and things. And mm -hmm. it was one of our first steps, I think, was this um, organizing things around the, the cool Max powers that you were going to use over and over again. Good job.
I still am very happy with that dumb puzzle where you just get a clue to how you're supposed to solve the puzzle by hearing your future self describe how you solve the puzzle. Yeah, so like, <laughs> how did we solve this adventure game puzzle? Oh, we got these two inventory items. And then, of course, at the very end, when you see the full playthrough of that puzzle, they're like, and don't forget those jumper cables. Those were also very important. <laughs> I guess that's... I don't know. It's good. Uh, I was like, the sound cut out. It's because... Because everything's loading. Under says, I remember getting a survey for this game that specifically asked about what are you most excited slash interested in in a very marketing type way. <laughs> you probably did. <laughs> I wasn't there anymore. I didn't write it. Ah, Stinky's Diner. The perfect place to catch up with old friends. And meet new ones, like emergency medical technicians and the friendly folks at Poison Control. Of the eyeball as she walks away. Should I? I feel like I just talked to these characters, but in uh, Ice Station Santa, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny playing 201 and then jumping to 301. I'm like, oh, let's go meet the people in the diner. All the same people. <laughs> Can we drive around yet, or is that not allowed? I don't. Oh, I can. I think you. Yeah, you can go to the lab. Bosco Tech Labs. Visit our new location. Oh, so Mama Bosco's too good to haunt our street anymore? Well, this is kind of a bad neighborhood to be a ghost. All the best cemeteries are on the other side of town. Have we shown the lab the street yet? Yeah, it's in, it's in the anywhere? teaser trailer. Um, okay. no, we did a screenshot in the We lab. changed the wooden fence into a chain link fence and put the construction si uh, site behind it, mostly just to be extraneous, but also it just, after seeing this view of the street in the other episode or in the other seasons, it seemed like a bummer to show or to have the sort of reconstruction from the Mametron, but then not, not see it. But also, there's a lot of extra art on this season because the amount of coding work required to get it done was significantly more than the initial amount of artwork so it seemed like we said okay then we can go crazy on a bunch of the backgrounds because there's no way randy will get caught up um and that is true it turns out i will never be caught up <laughs> so john john and m were able to go and do a, a bunch of cool environment work across all the episodes but it's been yeah yeah we really did go overboard been randomly selected to enjoy a free trial of the crime hyphen Tron XL at no cost to you. Randy, is it Jerry's decision to make text to speech errors like call it the crime hyphen Tron? <laughs> like, I assume that's just he, he reads it and just does a bad Macintosh voice, or did you specify which things he should get wrong? I don't. I think it was that way, and I just, I'm like, okay, whatever. Oh, did I say Randy? I, I, I meant Chuck. So I don't much. care who I'm talking to. Anyone. I just. Oh, you meant Chuck. I, I don't know. You said Randy. Oh, I, I don't know. My own brain has scrambled all of the names on this stream too many times at this point. I thought you were talking about me spick, fixing spelling errors no. everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, was the, was the original dialogue written as crime hyphen trial? And we had a long, very long discussion about whether we should keep toy box as one word, which it's not. Um, but we did. We kept it. Submit clues gathered from your investigation. Yeah, I think part of that was, I mean, that's that's them. my fault, but the, um, it was originally called the Devil's Toy Box, uh, the season, um, but Steve didn't want it, and it was named after Steve's Steve Toy Box Pops. comics, which line. don't have the space, I, I don't believe, unless I'm completely misremembering. But anyway, he, he asked us to change it to something else because... He didn't want anyone to get the idea that this was based on his toy box comics and if you haven't if you're a fantasy for sale and you haven't read his toy box comics you absolutely should should because they are brilliant yeah toy box is great um i forgot that that was the that was the thing but then you sell the new name so well in the in the final scene of 305 <laughs> No one would know that it wasn't deliberate this whole time. Oh, the, the very, very subtle mention of it. 
the complicated monologue designed specifically to shoehorn the title into the last <laughs> half <possible> minute. <laughs> Um, Jasper Pye asked if in the original game, what was uh, the reason for changing the UI between seasons two and three? I think the reason was that season three was gamepad first. Telltale had moved away from doing a lot of strict point and click stuff, like starting with, I think, maybe the Wallace and Gromit game. But Wallace yeah. and Gromit, Tales of Monkey Island, and Sam and Max season three, and the Back to the Future game were all kind of built like point and click games from how they were designed, like game design wise, but the way you navigate them was all gamepad first and that's why we did the sort of mass effect style dialogue wheel and that was when we switched to the big icons for inventory um and i'm pointing and clicking all over the place in the remaster because again randy had a lot to do that we decided would be important but the original version of it was all like this where you just sort of click and drag and move sam around um and you you made some changes in the remaster to make the UI more similar to the point and click UI of the previous two remasters. Uh, we moved the inventory box down here instead of it being up in this corner, and uh, the text now shows up over the hotspots instead of in the bottom corner. Um, and yeah, you can move Sam by clicking around. Uh, Jake was resistant to moving that text for a very very long time, and found I I like it when it feels like the original game because yeah, originally the text was always just down in the bottom corner. So yeah, we made some UI affordances, and also because it's point and click, we ended up making some of the nav cams wider, um, which is you know a pretty subjective change. But I think a lot of the time during the development of these games, the environment artists would sculpt their own nav cams, uh, which are these these uh, things for sort of how they modeled the scene, and they were almost always farther out that then the cinematic artists would then just push everything really close. And I remember Brian and Kim would be like, "Please don't." Please don't show this stuff. Like that one doorknob was not supposed to take up the entire frame. Um, well, I, yeah. I think that's also a reason that um, that season three looks so different or feels different than the other two games is mm -hmm. that it was designed for the gamepad, which caused um, a lot of different things you needed to do to kind of accommodate that, that changed the way that it looks. You get the, that kind of feeling of being much closer up to things. Yeah, you get stuff like this, too. God, there's a slight camera pull on that that just makes you erp a little bit um, in a good way. Um, there's a question in the chat. Will the Season 3 remaster be on Switch on release, or will that come later? Um, I don't know if we're 100% sure, but we're It'll be on all the same platforms as the, the platforms. other two. We don't yeah, have like scheduled details. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wandering around in the street. Um, Chuck, I don't know if this was at all what you were expecting this to look like at any point in the history of making this game, and I just made a bunch of stuff up for this scene, but uh, all of the original Season 3 backgrounds were made out of like two buildings that got pasted over and over again, and I remembered at one point you saying that uh, Mama Bosco was maybe living in a haunted brownstone near Washington Square Park, and that probably fell out of the game a million years before the game shipped, but... Um, <laughs> I visited New York and took a bunch of pictures of, the, of that neighborhood, and then we tried to actually kind of make this look like it. No idea if, oh, it, if yeah. anyone will ever care. Spooky. I think if that were a thing, I think it was mainly just um, uh, to kind of suggest Doctor Strange. Because um, he's got a... Uh, he's got his brownstone. Get out of here! It's yeah. Oh, that looks bad. The, like, the lighting... The the funny thing is like in stuff like Skunk Ape Ship, the uh, the lighting was already like pushing uh, hiya, Harry. the game or just everything in Mama season Bosco. or in three hundred one was like pushing the, the tool Bosco to its limits. To the other so but I shall it you, you just really makes you appreciate just how much the lighting yes. helps hey, scenes, good, especially like this one. Yeah, it's, it was nice that we were able to inherit over a decade of oh, hey guys. extra Telltale work. Uh, and then have Brett come in and relight all this stuff. But I mean, I know like the environment artists and uh, especially uh, Derek Sakai, who did a bunch of the lighting on the original release. Like season three has always looked really good. Welcome to the labs. You're my Brett loses his job as death. I think there was an explanation for that. Right. Harry probably just can't hold a job for very long. <laughs> Chuck, were you One laughing thing. at Harry Mullman being like the most pathetic guy? Just <laughs> just he just sort of that. wanders over to the elevator in a de dejected way. I remember Nick and Dennis insisted on stretching that cutscene out for as long as possible. 
Um, so the one thing from the street that I've heard, I wanted to mention was the, I think the tree and the gate are new. Yeah. Like yep. the foreground. Um, that's awesome because it reminds me of the Monkey 2. One of the things that I, I really liked in Monkey 2 was there's always like a layer of black, you know, stuff that you can only see in silhouette in yep. the foreground. We've tried to sneak that stuff into the remaster in places, and it's hard because the cameras are all completely bananas. But I wanted... I mean, we we wanted that foreground to kind of be like that Monkey Island 2 or Sam Max at the road, and also to feel a little bit like when you're in line at the Haunted Mansion was what I was yeah. looking at for those fence posts. Because um, why we, we, Yeah, we definitely made it a point of trying to introduce foreground elements in as many places as we, as we can. How's the afterlife treating you, Mrs. Mama Bosco? That's Dr. Mama Bosco. I spent the summer getting my PhD online. Yeah, I started to do that, but I kept getting distracted by all the funny cat pictures. You don't know how to use computers, Max. I What's think your doctorate in, Mama Bosco? Dr. Mrs. Mama, Mama Bosco was, to um, spirits to their corporeal form. Uh, was another one of those picture. things where the voice actress was so good that the character kept coming back. Like, mm -hmm. I think she was originally supposed to be just a one-off in the time travel episode. She was in 204, yeah, then she showed up again in 205, and then she became the new Bosco. Yeah, she's great. Did you hear about the alien gorilla that landed on our street? Yeah, it came through on the news alert. Something about sharing alien technology and ending all poverty and disease on Earth, right? Well, yeah, Zapper 37 Sophia asks, where's Bosco? Evil. I think I'm that sure you can... I'm even ask, ask him if he can help the cops about Bosco or about Bluster Blaster? Isn't it that like Bosco and Bluster Blaster are having like a fear and loathing style bender in Vegas during the season? Isn't yeah, yeah they went like to Las that? Vegas. Because then I think Bluster Blaster comes crashing in in 304 and is just extremely messed up by the time you finally see him again. I wonder if that was a. It's probably not. I wondered if that was like a dude bro reference. Like, they're they're going to Vegas and disappearing because that's where all Telltale characters go to disappear. <laughs> but it probably was not. I had a power core stolen from my lab. I don't know if you want to touch this question, but somebody asked if there's a reason the crew decided not to bring Bosco back for season three. Who can say? Yeah. <laughs> See you on the other side, Dr. Mama Bosco. Not if I can get this decent. So I said, I don't know if you want to touch that question or not. It's going to I mean, real my take is that he's just. That missing power my take was that is it the joke had been. By the end of season one, we were already making jokes about how his shtick was getting kind of repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's by the end of season two, we'd done everything that we could with him. I mean, by the end of season two, the A-plot is basically about Bosco, and his story kind yeah. of resolves at the end of that. And, and same with Sybil. And I, I remember, and Dave maybe could speak to this, like, when you were first coming up with how to do an episodic season, there was this idea that it would be like a sitcom, and you always check in with your wacky neighbors and everything, and as the became, game became less sitcom-y, you, you didn't have things for those people to do in every episode. Man hasn't heard about it. Yeah, I mean, that definitely was part of the planning that we did up front for the season was what are the, what are the things that are going to sort of tie it together but change every time. And one of the one of those was, you know, what is Bosco's crazy disguise going to be this time? Who's he going to be pretending to be? And the other one was what what is Sybil's job going to be? And then we moved from you know sort of stereotype and shtick some into some cool. substance in the next season we gave them both a little to do and you know Sybil has a relationship and sort of life changes and stuff and uh and Bosco like you said becomes part of the through line and then you know that stuff just sort of runs its course and there's other characters to focus on I'm trying to remember how to actually complete this puzzle. I think I need to use future vision on the radio in Stinkies. Yeah. Yeah. So that I know that Harry Moleman's lottery ticket is a winning ticket. Yeah. It's two o'clock. I'm out of time. Just realized. Um, yeah. We thank you for having me. And oh, not yeah. show too much. Go. Not show too we much. We can also email. stop playing the video game. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, if you leave, it's going to mess up all the video. It's going to be great. You should just do it. <laughs> Well, that was what I was just going to ask. Was, Dave, you should scramble you know, all of our identities, it was, it was, uh, please, with, with Wild Man. Well, we've raised 
for the Video Game History Foundation. Um, our top donor was Shiny for seven hundred and fifty dollars. Wow! And um, <clears throat> that's awesome. Yeah, and you guys have been amazing. This is, the, you know, I, I talked to Frank yesterday, and he was so excited about how much money we were raising. And at that time, that was half as, you know, half where we are now. So um, we're going to keep the campaign open for a few more days. So if there are any re remaining people who want to pick up a printer loper, you still have the opportunity. Um, and yeah, this was this was fun. Any parting words from any of the Skunk Cape team or our special guests? Say thanks for inviting me. It's great to see y'all again. I haven't seen y'all in forever. Yeah, thanks yeah, for showing up on the screen. Thanks for coming. Uh, it's really yeah. awesome thanks for coming. Um, All right. Well, and I Jake's guess gonna just sit there and keep playing by himself. Should we? Should we raid somebody? I don't know who we would raid. So raid? I don't know. To that is no. I'm going to transition <laughs> to an extremely messed up image of. Hold on. I'm just going to fix this. You could say that again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, and if you haven't yet, please uh, go to the Steam page for um, Devil's Playhouse and wishlist it because you will get an alert when we have news about the release date and a game for you to buy, which will be in 2024. We promise. Yeah, don't forget to pre order the video game. No, 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 pre order. Pre order announced. Hey, thank you for the thanks for the donation. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm just so happy to get all this old Telltale stuff out of my house. So, <laughs> I appreciate everybody's help in helping us clear out our closets. Uh, do right. we want to take any questions from anyone, or do we want to leave and say thank you and be and be done? I that sounded know. like I had a preferred <laughs> way, way out of this. But. I think, you know, the last several scrolls of chat have just been people saying the game looks awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. Uh, they can't wait to play it. So I think we can't wait to finish it. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess thanks everyone for watching the stream. Thanks, uh, Chuck, for showing up and uh, playing a little bit of this. Thanks for being positively surprised instead of negatively surprised by what showed up <laughs> in the remaster. Uh, and thanks to the uh, Video Game History Foundation for hosting the stream. Yes. All right. We'll see you guys around. Devil's Playhouse Remastered comes out next year. Next year will soon be this year, which is very exciting news for everyone, including us, because we'll be done with the game. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Cool. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.